It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up, get going. More than 100 million on the move for Labor Day weekend on the roads and at the airports after a record-breaking summer. We expect yeah, a lot more people, a lot more crowds, uh, especially with a long weekend. While at East Coast beaches, dangerous rip currents closing down some popular areas. We've got it all covered, including some good news in the forecast. Then, moving in. I'm helping out a college freshman away at school for the first time. Are you ready to welcome him? Let's do it. Y'all ready? We ready? Yeah! Let's go, Ethan! As we celebrate the major milestone for kids and parents. I'm still, you know, not ready to let go yet, so I'm just mm -hmm. very excited to <laughs> the next chapter of his life. We'll unpack it all coming up. Plus, come on down. The Price is Right paying tribute to legendary host Bob Barker. I mentioned the word legend earlier, and uh, while that word gets thrown around all too much these days, it could be more appropriate when you think about Bob's time on The Price is Right. Honoring the TV icon who held that skinny mic for 35 years. The detail straight ahead in Pop Star. And Wheel Excited. Grammy-winning singer Darius Rucker is here performing some of his biggest hits and some brand new music as the music icon helps kick off our Labor Day weekend ride. Today, Friday, September 1st, 2023. With us on this Friday morning, we're kicking off the holiday weekend. Savannah and Hoda enjoying the, the day off. They'll be back next week. We are back with more of our special series, Back to School Today. And this morning, a firsthand look at an emotional milestone for college students and parents alike. Freshman move-in You remember move-in Of course, yeah. yes. So it's happening on thousands of campuses across the country this week. So... I decided to head over to Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey to help a very special student unpack boxes and brand new beginnings. Bring it out! I heard Rutgers got a great marching band. Ethan couldn't wait to tell you guys. Back in May, Ethan Ty from Old Bridge, New Jersey announced to the world that not only was he an amazing hip-hop dancer, but in the fall, he would be headed to Rutgers University as a freshman. And a few months later, so are we. Okay, Ethan was just on the show about three months ago. So, Henry, you ready to welcome him? Let's do it. Y'all ready? Yeah! As 13,000 Rutgers freshmen unload their boxes, bins, and bags into the residence halls, Ethan soon becomes one of them. <laughs> welcome to Rutgers. Thank you. This is your freshman residence hall. Yes. Yeah, your top floor. It's a penthouse. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ethan's sister, Emmy, and his mom and dad, May and Ted, Provide reinforcements. Feeling good? Um, good, but sad. <laughs> oh, but excited. Excited, very excited. He's moving in, but you know, letting part of my part of my arm leave me. Oh, oh. <laughs> See, we're empty nesters now. So after officially today, we're. This know, is it. This is it. Have you been inside this residence hall? No, yet? I have not. Keep your expectations low. Well <laughs> <laughs> this is freshman house. This is your lobby. Ethan is on the top floor, or as we like to call it, the penthouse. You guys only live like 30 minutes away. Yes, yes. Yeah. so he wants mommy's home cooking, so hopefully oh, I get to go. He's already planned that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pick up laundry. Get to laundry. <laughs> You're not going home. <laughs> no, no. Then it's time for an iconic moment in many college freshmen's experience, the dorm room reveal. That's pretty nice, actually. Is this what you were expecting? Uh, no. It's <laughs> pretty nice, though. Yeah. And here's the thing: since you're the first oh, wow. one in, your roommate's not here yet. I get to pick one. You get to pick your bed. <laughs> Window looks pretty. There nice. you go. Smart pick. Uh, Mom, Dad, the 
this is where the magic is going to happen. This yeah. is <laughs> I'm only going to be here. I'm never going to go out. Ooh. That's going to be the only time he uses that chair. Like this. So, I guess we should start unloading the car. All right, let's do it. I'm here to help. Back to the car for the infamous residence hall load in. See, yeah. so hopefully you packed light. You did not pack light. <laughs> You did not pack light. <laughs> spike ball, of course, gotta have spike ball. Lots of toiletries. We're full service here. Have it today's show. Oh, this is a nice pillow. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, sir. What is this? Shoe bag. Oh wow, the shoe bag. <laughs> gotta have your rum. I mean, that's just, that's a freshman staple. What is oh, this? that's a drying rack. <laughs> well, we can put this back here. <laughs> You're never using it. I don't know if you saw how big that room was. <laughs> it's going to be tricky. Ethan was a little more optimistic than I was about this all fitting in his room, but we're going for it. Ethan decided to bring his entire house with him, apparently. Wait until that kid sees my bill, though. Soon we have a nice little assembly line going. But now that we're getting settled in the dorm room how, how are we feeling it's surreal right now he's we're finally getting him moved in and i'm still you know not ready to let go yet so i'm just mm. very excited to <laughs> the next chapter of his life how are we feeling good. are you feeling good <laughs> yeah um i think so i wasn't so emotional now but i feel like seeing it and uh <laughs> It's See getting real. Yeah, it's... I'm getting a little teary myself. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even starting my freshman year. <laughs> Listen, there's one more thing that the room needs. Come on! Come on! Come on! And finally, it's time to kick back and admire what we have accomplished. I think it's good. It's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And when you need help moving out, I don't want you to call me. <laughs> I will give you the number of a guy. <laughs> All right. Best of luck. Thank you so much. You're going to crush it. Thank you. Uh, Ethan's a good kid. Yeah, I love that guy. He had a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, all that stuff didn't fit in that room. Oh, um, we but tried. His, his family, good people. That was good. People. So, again, we want to wish Ethan the best of luck and to his family as well, May 10 and Emmy, uh, and to all of the other folks who are moving in as well. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations, you guys. We have yeah. another Rutgers grad outside, our own Dylan Dreyer. She's with some fans and other Big Ten schools. I, Everybody's I, excited. That was Dylan's dorm room. I, I, that was my dorm room, and it's nice <laughs> to see the furniture. It's still exactly the same. So, yeah, nothing is has changed in the last 25 years. Holy cow. All right, moving on.
You, so you've been on tour for how, how long now? I've been on tour since April. April. Oh, wow. Yeah. How are you holding up? I love it. I love yeah. it. we got like four, five more shows. but it's I love it. Great. They love it too, don't you? Yeah. I was out here listening to the whole uh, rehearsal. It could not be a more beautiful morning for a concert. And before we get to all that music, maybe a check of the weather? Yeah. yeah the weather's looking fine. <laughs> <laughs> The City Concert Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. We are back. What a beautiful way to head into the holiday weekend. We have a fun concert coming up with Mr. Darius Rucker. Yes, yes. The, the three-time Grammy winner is here with a full half hour of music coming up in mere moments. But first, let's take a look back at his journey to the top of the charts. One of South Carolina's favorite sons, Darius Rucker, was born and raised in Charleston, making his way to superstardom in the 90s as a lead singer of the rock band Hootie and the Blowfish. Their debut record, Cracked Rearview, is still one of the best-selling studio albums of all time in the U.S., earning the group two Grammys and three top ten hits. The best that I can. When Darius branched out as a solo artist, he became a trailblazer in country music. There wasn't anybody looking at me on country radio when I came in. But there's nothing holding Darius Rucker back. He's released four number one country albums with tracks like All Right. All right. All right. And the Grammy winning Wagon Wheel. Darius has brought his talents to today many times over the years, even letting me join in. The sun comes up tomorrow, let be. A proud dad of three, Darius is putting family at the center of his new album. And out next month, Carolyn's Boy is named after his late mother. That's just another homage to the greatest woman I've ever known. Darius is on tour across the country, but making a special stop this morning right here on our city concert stage. All right, wait's over, performing one of his brand new hits, Fires Don't Start Themselves. Put your hands together for Darius Rucker.
Country music, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Darius Rucker. His new album, Carolyn's Boy, it comes out on October 6th. It's always good to have you back at the show, brother. It's always good here being here with you guys. I love coming to the game. Let's let's talk about the new album that's coming out. Give us the, the, the backstory and, and why why put it out now at this point in your career? It's been six years since I had a record out in country. Wow. And it was just time and the, during the pandemic and everything, you had so much to write about. So I took my time, got with some great guys, got some great songs, and yeah, I'm really excited for people. I just saw the cover of that album. It's named after your late mother. It's titled Carolyn's Boy. Tell us why now you just decided to do that album for your mom? Because uh, yeah, she was such a big influence on me and she was my biggest supporter. And I've gone 30 years with this career and I thought it was finally time to tell her thank you. So Darius, you were just saying before we came back on the air, you sent your youngest Jack off to uh, off to college here in the city. Yeah. How does it feel to have them all out of the house? Oh, you know, it, it feels awful. <laughs> you know? But, uh, you know, I got two kids here in New York now, so I think I'm going to be spending a lot more time Well, here. come by anytime. I will, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And you're you're still on in the middle of your tour right now. Yeah, we, we're 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 finishing up the dates, and then we're going to take some time off and go to Europe and next year. But uh, it, it's been a great tour. All awesome. right, enough talking. Let's get back to it. <laughs> Let's do it. Time. These people came to hear some music. <laughs> time to have a good time. Absolutely. Right. Let's go. Going too fast to life reminded me I had to slow it on down. I'm scared of worrying about the things I can't change. Gonna lay in the sun, dance in the rain, do a little more living in the heat. Good time. 
checks on the bucket list. Hey man, hey that war we're all. Just might be enough. Don't forget to make it count. Don't forget to sing out loud. I don't forget the song in line. And don't forget to have a damn good time and have a few hell yeah. Hell and some backwards Hollywood and on sunset. What a good Lord's talking. Friday morning before the long holiday weekend. Darius Rucker has been out here rocking our city concert stage all morning. Uh, we couldn't let D go without performing one of his classic number one hits, Wagon Wheel. Here he is once again, Darius Rucker.
By the way, we've got a, a super fan here. Our head writer is a guy named Jared Carullo. There he is over there. He's wearing the Gamecock, the Game Gamecock sweatshirt. Went to USC. Huge D Rocker fan. Nice. So I love you're that. You're doing the national anthem tomorrow. I'm doing the anthem at the game tomorrow, yes. That's awesome. When Carolina beats UNC. Yeah, we are going to beat them. <laughs> Thank you once again. Guys, one more round of applause. And where's the next stop on tour? Where can folks uh, get you? Choctaw, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Next week. Yes. Oklahoma next week. Oklahoma next week. All right. All Best right. part is Darius is going to stick around for the third hour with the perfect song to send us into a holiday weekend. We're going to have a little beers and sunshine. You know what I like? Everyone is smiling this morning. Yes. Like, as far as I can see. Yeah, you're kicking off the weekend right. Oh, thank you. Love it. Have a fantastic Labor Day. We'll take a quick break. Third hour of today right back after your local news, your weather, and a quick check of these messages. This morning on the third hour of today, Encore, Taylor Swift coming to a theater near you, bringing her wildly popular era's tour from the stage to the screen. Her fans racing to get tickets, even causing a ripple effect for other movies. We're live with the details. Then later, our Consumer Confidential, what to buy and what to skip in September and the best Labor Day sales out there right now. Plus, a Superfood Friday SOS. Joy Bauer answering your questions about everything from a hot food trend to an age-old debate. And Grammy-winning country star Darius Rucker throwing a party on the plaza, and we're invited. And fires don't stop he saved one last song for us, and it's the perfect Labor Day anthem. That's all ahead today, Friday, September 1st, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Oh, good Friday morning. Welcome to this third hour of today. Craig, Dylan, Chanel, and perhaps you've heard of the country music superstar, Darius Rucker. Been rocking the plaza all morning long, and also Darius been Darius spent a lot of time taking pictures, signing stuff as well, okay. being a gracious guy. First time in six years releasing some new solo music. Played some of those songs this morning. Yeah. Album drops up, up October sixth, right? Yes, October sixth. I'm excited. I'm ready to get this You one still out. get nervous when you perform after all these? Absolutely. Really? Every time. Really? Every time. Yes. Yes. So I think if I stop getting nervous, I'll stop doing it. Oh yeah. boy, well, we yeah, don't want you to do that. I think I get nervous because I care so much. Yeah. I get nervous when so I get you've been on tour all summer. You're starting to wind down. Is there anything you're looking forward to when you get back home? 
Uh, or looking do you forward, just love it so much? I, love, you want to keep I going. like touring, but I look forward to get back hanging out with the kids. Yeah, you know they're 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 funny. Like, they, they, <laughs> that, what dad does or doesn't really matter to them. So when I get off tour, that's what I love to do most. I love that. Yeah. And golf, you're gonna play a lot. Of golf. I play a lot of golf, but I do that on tour too. So. <laughs> <laughs> you say touring has changed for you since you know back in the 90s with Hootie mm. and the Blowfish and to where you're at now? Oh well the party's over that's one of the things <laughs> that's changed but uh, it's just now we really got a town it's an art mm -hmm. right now you know you go in every night and you get every day and you get there and we got it down to art early on we really weren't sure what we were doing now it's mm. like it, we got it it's, exactly. it, it's, it's old hat. Makes yeah. sense. This, yeah. this new album that's coming out um, how is this going to be different from some of your, your previous country albums? Uh, this record is probably more mature it's more personal I think than most a lot of records have been it, it's uh I, i'm just really proud of the fact that i still get to do this at my age you know I, all i've wanted to do since i was four is sing hmm. and I, i'm coming out with my sixth country record it's amazing and it's just been an amazing run all right there are a lot of folks who've been here all morning got up really early some folks stayed up really late i want to introduce okay, you okay. to a super fan okay uh, she's easy to spot because she's the only one Aww. wearing a, a, a glittered I gotta uh, go cowboy hat what's what's your name Pam. Pam, where are you from? Charleston. Oh, she's from Charleston. Oh, nice to meet you, Pam. <laughs> and when did you become a, a big Darius fan? I moved to Charleston 10 years ago, never heard of Darius, and I moved there and I fell in love with him. He's a guy in Charleston. He is, he is that guy. So tell me, is there a particular song that resonates with you more than some of the others? The song that resonates with me the most, Darius, is this, when you say, <laughs> your mom Aww. is looking down at you. That saves me every time I hear that song. Oh, thank you. Aww, that's really sweet. Yeah. That's so sweet. Thank you for coming by the plaza this morning. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Dylan so Chanel, sweet. back to you. Okay, so check us out here. That Send it over to you. We love you, I'm man. going inside. My goodness. All right, well, now to another music superstar that's back in the headlines, Taylor Swift, bringing her era's tour now to movie theaters. Our chief Swifty correspondent, Emily Akeda, is on top of that story, as we'd expect. Emily, good morning. A good morning for Taylor Swift fans who missed out on the chance to see her in concert, or maybe they just want to relive that experience. She is now dropping a concert film, and her fans are, in the words of Taylor Swift, ready for it. Taylor Swift is entering her movie theater era. Welcome to the Eras Tour. Bringing her sold out concert tour that's dazzled fans around the world to the big screen this fall. It's a cool summer. The Cruel Summer singer writing on social media, the Eras Tour has been the most meaningful electric experience of my life so far, adding in an apparent nod to her lucky number. Starting October 13th, you'll be able to experience the concert film in theaters in North America at thousands of AMC locations. Within minutes of Thursday's announcement, the demand from devoted Swifty started driving delays at the box office that her fans know all too well. When I went in the app, it was literally 25 minutes of a wait time. And then when I was getting the tickets, everything was already sold out. AMC, which is also distributing the film to other theaters, warned of potential delays and outages during ticket sales, even after upgrading its website to handle five times the previous traffic. Chloe Charlton is excited to bring her kids to finally see their favorite singer. The movie is just such an awesome opportunity for them to get to experience it at a reasonable time and a reasonable price. Industry experts expect the Eras Tour film to rival the success of major Hollywood hits, even prompting horror film The Exorcist Believer to change its original Friday the 13th release date. With the founder of Bloomhouse writing, look what you made me do and hashtag Exorswift. What does that say about the power of Taylor Swift? We've never had such recognition of, oh, this is a tsunami coming to the box office and we are going to get out of the way of it. Swift has released films about previous tours, but only after they wrapped. This time, she's in the middle of her record-setting stadium tour that's become a cultural phenomenon. Polestar estimates the Eras tour could gross a record-breaking one and a half billion plus dollars throughout its 20-month run. With such high demand, the average seat in the U.S. surged to a jaw-dropping $1,130 on ticket reseller StubHub. It's a lot of money, a lot of effort, but again, it's worth it. Just, you know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The movie offers a far cheaper and more accessible way for fans to experience the Eras tour at $19.89 a reference to her 2014 pop album that she's re-releasing also in October. As the summer of Swift looks to extend into autumn. <laughs>
Okay, so I, I mean, I haven't been to the concert. So mm -hmm. what can we expect from the movie? Is it going to incorporate other things, or is it just like a concert now turned into a movie? Okay, well, first things first, you need to go see the movie <laughs> and to the concert. Yeah. But the concert film is expected to run two hours and forty-five minutes long. So that is actually slightly shorter than her marathon concert. So mm. the speculation is, okay, maybe they're like trimming down some of those mm -hmm. eight-minute-long standing yeah. ovations. Maybe oh. we'll get some behind-the-scenes action. Like mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen those clips where she's diving into the stage. So maybe. Maybe we'll get to see some That's of the cool. behind the scenes magic, but regardless what you can expect in this movie going experience, it will be far from traditional. There's going to be dancing, singing, trading of friendship mm -hmm. bracelets. So all that hype, Taylor Swift is at least encouraging people to yeah. bring to the theaters and thousands of them come October. It's, it's like seeing Rocky Hour Picture Show, you know, where like everybody's dressed in costume. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. Everybody's like they're there It'll for a It'll be an party. experience. It will be an experience. Well, You've yeah. been to a few of these shows. When you go, do you dress up? Are well, you? oftentimes I'm working as well, so there's like a happy medium. <laughs> but I will, I will, I will be in a theme like you know I was wearing a pink vest, kind of symbolic of her the man song. I don't know if you're familiar. No, 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 no. Take the roots now. Take the roots now. Take the roots now. We're all like, no, no. sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Emily. Thanks, all right. Well, since we're on the music theme this morning, <laughs> this buzz this morning over a possible epic reunion, NSYNC fans think they've sniffed out a big reveal. It all has to do with the new Trolls movie, which is about a boy band reuniting. The film stars Justin Timberlake, and a promotional website for the film is accompanied by a whistling tune and then that N logo, the NSYNC logo, which fans say there's a nod there to the band. Listen to this. Catch. <laughs> Okay, so if the speculation is right, it would be the first in sync reunion in a decade. Mm. So we'll find out when Trolls band to get, when they come together for DreamWorks Animation and our sister company Universal Pictures. It hits theaters in November. Yeah. I mean, that's more than a nod, right? I mean, that's their logo. Maybe they'll do something for the movie. Right. You know, mm. it would get attention. So it got us to thinking, are there any groups or bands that you would like to see reunite? Who would you like to see? So for me, okay, this is a, your, your hint. You ready? How did you know oh God. Oh that God. I never <laughs> told you found out? It used, it used I to be the Jets. On you. It used to be the Jets. That's it? Oh. I never told hey, Can I just say? Well, I think Wayne Newton is in here because, you know, that whole thing. Okay, wait, let me, no, wait. <laughs> no, let me really try, let me really try. Hold on. You must have heard no. it from my best friend. Mm -hmm. She's always no, talking no. when she should be no, listening. No, no, don't do this. The internet is undefeated. <laughs> do not do that to yourself. I want the Jets to be reunited. What uh, about you, Craig? I, 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 outcast. I mean, you didn't give us any oh, bit. Andre 3000 and Big Boy should have gotten back years, should have gotten back together years. That one could happen. Don't you think? People have been talking about outcasts getting back together for almost 20 years. But I'm here for it when it happens. Do you have one? Well, I mean, a lot of the bands that I liked growing up, I mean, they broke up because somebody passed away. <laughs> so I just, I don't like, home. yeah. That, that, that'd be a heck of a reunion, well, no, though. Like, it? I'm thinking Nirvana. It would be oh, incredible oh, to hear new yeah. music, but obviously. You know what? You have enough boys. You could have, they could have their own little boy band. They, they actually do like to play their instruments. Just Ooh. ahead of here on a Friday morning <laughs> as we try to get things back on track, uh, we're going to help you get a better night's sleep when we tell you how to figure out your sleep personality. Yes, that is a thing, but first, you don't want to snooze on this morning's Consumer <laughs> Confidential. Vicki Wynn here in studio to tell us what we should be buying this month and what we should be holding off on buying this month. Let me try it again. So, no, don't do it. Third hour today, right back after this. Friend. Stop it. She's always talking when she should be listening. Yeah.
this morning's Consumer Confidential. We are flipping the calendar to September. Oh, it's the first day of meteorological fall. I forgot to announce oh. that at the top of the show. Let's start Just all so over. You know, we wow. made it to September, so now it's our chance to fall into some big savings. So here to tell us what we should be buying this month and what to hold off on, senior consumer investigative correspondent Vicki Wynn. Vicki, happy Good fall. Morning. Happy first meteorological day No, we're not doing that. Fall. We're not killing <laughs> some I'm celebrating, that. Dylan. I observe. Okay, so a lot of sales start to kick in for Labor Day weekend. So what... Um, why don't we just start there? Okay, Labor Day weekend is all about the home, but let me preface it by saying don't buy anything just because it's on sale. I always feel like I have to do that. It's but true. this is about the time to buy mattresses. So mm. let me ask you this. How often do you think you should replace your mattress? Like how long should you let it go? Seven 10 years, years, 10 years, 12 years? Oh, oh, so I 10. Seven, I'm gonna five, say seven ten. years? Ten. Okay, seven, according mm. to the Better oh. Sleep Council, they say that is when you should get a new mattress. Or if you're going to sleep and you're waking up day after day and not feeling rested or you're waking up with aches and pains, or you go to a hotel and you find that you get mm. a better night's sleep yeah. somewhere else, that's a sign you need a new mattress. So mm. you can check the usual suspects, right? Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, Serta. There are other companies called, um, Casper and mm -hmm. Nectar is one that's got 33% off of its a hybrid cooling mattress. My mm -hmm. hair artist today said she loves her Nectar mattress. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Uh, in store, by the way, mattress from $700 off of their mattresses. Major appliances, this is the time. You've been waiting, waiting. The refrigerator, the washer, dryer. Mm -hmm. Go to Lowe's, Home Depot, Best Buy will have a haul away service to take away your old appliances, which you generally yeah. do yeah. because you can't get rid of those yourselves. And then outdoor home goods, I've been telling you all summer, wait till the end of mm -hmm. summer to get the outdoor furniture, the outdoor rugs, umbrellas. Kohl's is a spot you might think about. Macy's mm, as well, yeah. Overstock and Wayfair. Okay. Let's talk about some other Labor Day weekend sales and what we can expect, other deals or discounts this month. Okay, so sporting goods, the summer sports like pickleball, if you were looking to get into the sport, now's the time you might find some of those items on sale. Mm -hmm. Camping gear as well, your tents, your sleeping bags, your outdoor chairs. Also, if you want to gear up for NFL sports, basketball yeah. season, this is the time to go and look for those jerseys. Those will be 20 to 50% off. Berries and fruits, raspberries, Ceramic. blackberries, strawberries is the end of the season for those. Oh. And also apples, honey crisp apples, oh, golden delicious, red crisp. delicious. Those are in season now, but if you like a Fuji or a Granny Smith, wait till later. It's another oh, no. month before they okay. harvest those. Right. And holiday flights, they say six to eight weeks in advance to book. So if you're looking to get away for Hanukkah, mm. Christmas, Thanksgiving, the end of this month oh, is the time to book. Ahead. I know, no. but it's mm. when you get the best deals. Yeah, and sure. the good thing is if the fares go lower, which they probably won't, you'll probably be able to get an adjustment. <laughs> what about okay. free stuff? You you usually have a, a few things that we can get for, for free during if the month. It's free, it's for me. Okay, mark your calendar. September 18th is National Cheeseburger Day. Uh -huh. Past performance doesn't guarantee future results, but in the past we've seen Carl's Jr., Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's, all offering some kind of deal on the 18th. Uh, September 23rd, National Public Lands Day. This is a great one. It's mm. the fourth Saturday of every September. You can get your whole family together. It's the largest single day volunteer effort across the country and you can just go to volunteer.gov and enter national public lands mm -hmm. all kinds of parks will pop up in your area you get in for free you do a little cleanup effort it's kind of a fun thing to do with the kids to get yeah. outside and really appreciate really, yeah. the amazing mm -hmm. parks we have in our country and then finally something we love and know very well around here 929 is national coffee day so mm -hmm. pete's starbucks dunkin donuts last year had a free medium or a hot or iced coffee with purchase so if you are up this is the the hack here is be a member of the loyalty club mm -hmm. sign up for the app so that's how you get the alerts on what the deal will be on those special on days. Day. Seems and like every day is a national day or something. Should, so what should we hold off on real quickly? Okay, autumn attire, always buy clothes for the season at the end of the season okay. for next year. Cruises, you do not want to buy your cruise now. Apparently booking Black Friday or Travel Tuesday, which is the Tuesday okay. after that Friday, that's the best time to get a cruise deal. And finally, your Halloween costume, the prices will go way down mm. as we get closer that's to October. Although I did just buy all my Halloween costumes uh, cost because God. I was worried the sizes yes. uh, wouldn't be available by the time I got closer. Selection Halloween. does get more limited, or yes. just make your own. Don't contribute to the consumer culture and just make your own. Thank you, Vicky. Like well, it. I contributed. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and, you, Vicky. and happy meteorological fall Thank to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Craig. Coming up, <laughs> we're going to share the different type of sleep personalities, and we're going to tell you how to get the best out of your rest. And then later, look who's here. There's Joy Bauer. She's going to answer your superfood question. She's going to break down a really popular food trend when the third hour of today comes right back after this.
don't want to sleep on this next segment. Mm -hmm. We are going to help identify your sleep personality. Knowing what kind of sleeper you are can help improve your chances of getting better rest. So here to help us is Shelby Harris, a licensed clinical psychologist in private practice who specializes in behavioral sleep medicine. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good Welcome morning. Back. Thanks for having me. Guys. So this is a topic we all need to talk about sleep. Sure. And you say it's time for all of us to just kind of take inventory of not only how many hours of sleep, but the quality as well. Yeah, we really need to start thinking about our sleep in general. It's not just about sleep disorders. Yeah. It's just about mm -hmm. trying to figure out how we can get the best sleep as often as we can. All right, so let's talk about yeah. uh, some of these different personalities. And this first one, I think this is probably me. Yeah. The, the busy brain. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the busy brain and how do we fix them? Me as well. So the busy brain is the person who tends to just notice that either they have racing thoughts, it could sometimes be anxiety too, or it's just that your volume on your brain is a 10 hmm. and you can't turn it down to hmm. like a you're one just or thinking two. of everything, you're not just, even stress. Yes, yeah, you're thinking. just replaying the day, thinking yep. about all the things you got going on the next day. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. So and there, there what do you do? Of, there are a lot of things that you can do. So it could just be, we call it a brain dump. So it could be journaling, writing down a to-do list. But my favorite technique for it is meditation. Mm -hmm. And it's not just meditation to fall asleep to at night. It's meditation during the day. Spend a minute or two practicing meditation. You can use any of the apps. You can just focus on what you're eating. That helps you to be able to focus your brain and let go of busy mm -hmm. thoughts so mm -hmm. it's easier to use it at night when you mm -hmm. really need to use it. Okay. Uh, the next sleep personality is the temperature extremist. Yes. I mean, it's got to be either really hot or really cold. Uh huh. And that? I know that I'm affected by a lot too. So it's <laughs> those people who tend to have hot flashes, a lot of women thinking about perimenopause, menopause, night sweats, but also the person who tends to wake up really cold at night. Yeah. And there are a lot of things that you can do for it. So we think about just temperature in your room. So it could be trying to optimize whatever the temperature is somewhere in the mid 60s to low 70s. It could also be there's really great tech out there now. So there's mm. great tech for your mattress. There are pads you and can cooling. put down that are cooling that are but there's also things that have thermostats so you mm. can actually set it to go down throughout the night. I feel like it changes as the night goes on. Usually exactly. I'm hot but some nights I wake up really cold. Exactly. You should actually be cooling off throughout mm -hmm. the night and then starting to warm up about two hours before. And oh, some wow. people have a bed partner that just has a totally different internal thermostat. Yes, my bed so, partner does. Uh-huh, and so that's a really common thing. So those mattress pads are really great to use. But then oh. also think about your bedding, right? We always tend to use the same comforter for the bed. All year. Get two comforters. Mm -hmm. It's not pretty, but get two comforters, different weights, and then put a coverlet over it so it looks okay, like Okay, so it's all, you know. Yeah. So you know what, there are some people who are so sensitive, if you make any noise, mm -hmm. they wake up, and then you have other people on the opposite end of the spectrum where you just you try to wake them up and they're just out. Yeah. So the right. person who tends to be really sensitive to all the noises, you know, there are really great technology out there. Just think about, you could use different kinds of earplugs. So there's really great technology when it comes to earplugs or even the um, noise blocking earphones, mm -hmm. headphones. That are they comfortable use. to sleep in? There are some that are really comfortable that are really low profile that go in your ear and those are wonderful. And that's safe to wear? Yep, for a lot of people. You know, you really want to talk with your doctor first mm -hmm. just to make sure, but then also think about, do you have insomnia? Mm -hmm. So if you have insomnia, white noise is great, but if you have insomnia, are you just looking for anything that's a potential sleep threat that mm. could potentially wake you up or keep you awake? Mm. So maybe you want to work on your insomnia too if that's, that's an issue. Advice. You've got okay. some advice for the, the night owl and the early bird. Yeah, so the night owl is the person who's just, they can sleep enough, but they sleep really late. Yep. Yeah. And then the early bird's the person who tends to wake up really early, but they're sleeping enough at night. So think about the time cues you're giving to yourself. So we call them zeitgebers. So are you getting a lot of light? Are you really active before bed? Because that could be making you stay up a lot later. In the morning, are you having trouble lifting up the curtains to get mm -hmm. a lot of light? And you can slowly move it. And if you really are struggling with it, and it doesn't work in the life that you have, because you just might be a night owl and it might be fine for yeah. you. But if it's not working, talk to a doctor because there's light therapy, there's melatonin that we can use in very low doses at specific times. Mm. can be really, really useful for some It's people. really interesting. The important thing is to take some assessment here. Take an assessment. It if it's not working for you, if it's not working routinely, and if these things aren't enough, we have so many wonderful evidence-based treatments that you should definitely talk to your doctor. It's important. You yeah. shouldn't suffer if you're having routine bad nights. I love that. You really don't have great. to struggle. Don't struggle. And Shelby so Harris. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you All so right. much for having me. Uh, next, the Superfood SOS. Joy Bauer is answering your questions, including the age-old kitchen debate. Do you need to wash chicken before you cook it? That's a good one. And then later, Grammy-winning country star Darius Rucker joins us live in studio to talk new music, family, and perform one more song just for us. The third hour of today, we'll be right back.
Well, it is time once again for Superfood Friday. And this morning, today, nutrition and health expert Joy Bauer is answering your questions in another edition of Superfood SOS. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, guys. Welcome back, Joy. I yeah. love answering these questions. These are good. And these yeah. are actually, we should point out, these are actual, actual questions. Actual questions. Actual questions. Yes. And a lot of these questions come in over and over again from various people. Okay, okay. so let's good start ones. with the first one. Okay. Uh, this is Suzanne on Long Island. She says, I've heard eating grapefruit can interfere with certain medications. So why oh. is that? And which medications does this include? I always wondered this. Um, so grapefruit has so many fabulous attributes and it pains me to say this, but it also has this unique phytonutrient buried within which actually, um, it could increase the concentration of certain medications, so you're mm. getting more than you bargain for. And in other instances, it minimizes the amount of medication that you're getting. Oh. So yeah, it's a real bummer. And the medications that it includes, first, certain cardiac medications, so that would include statins mm. that lower cholesterol, certain blood pressure medications, mm. um, antihistamines, That's anxiety, and steroids. But I should point out, it's not all of the medications that are within these groups and that's why it's vital that if anyone's taking medications and they don't know if they should be eating grapefruit make a list of them okay. go to your pharmacist mm -hmm. or your physician or your healthcare practitioner and know if you need to avoid it and it's not just regular grapefruit it's grapefruit juice mm -hmm. as well Dang. and so if such a bummer I know if you're craving that sweet juiciness mm -hmm. I would say swap in pineapple or clementines sure. yeah, clementines. yeah. All right. um, next this is a bit of an age-old debate to wash or not to wash we're talking about chicken here. This is a this is a question that we got in. It's actually a question that we've gotten in uh, a number of times. Actually, one of the answer. Most recently from Kaylee. And so, what do you guys think? Well, some people take lime, and you know they yeah. do all the things. I don't I, wash it. I don't think you have to because if you cook it long enough, that that would kill most of the foodborne. You actually should not be washing your chicken. Boom. And Th yeah. This is a strong like recommendation like from the CDC the and from the U.S. Department of Agriculture as That's well through a lot of research, and here's why. So raw chicken houses harmful bacteria that can cause foodborne illness like salmonella. Right. And so when you take it out of the package and you rinse it under a running faucet, that water can splash yeah. the bacteria not only in the sink, but on the oh. countertops as well. So you're actually contaminating a larger surface area. So instead what you want to do is take it out of the package, put it directly in your hot skillet or on your baking sheet, season it up, and cook it away. Mm -hmm. And if anybody has the eek factor, I would say this, don't rinse it, but take a paper towel, yeah. it could be slightly wet or dry, and, it's like too wet. And, yeah, and just like That's wipe so it off, and then make sure you stash that paper towel deep in, in the, the depths of a garbage can, and then soapy water on your hands as well. And one other thing to point out, make sure that the internal temperature of the fattest part of your chicken hits 165, because then you know you kill you off it. all yeah. that harmful you bacteria. You solved it, because I'm telling yeah. you, that is definitely a Do not a big wash people, the chicken. <laughs> <Bauer said laughs> people so. have a whole no process. Washing. I see you out there with your lines. <laughs> all right, Mega has a question about a buzzworthy group of foods. Let's listen. Hi, Joy. My name is Mega Singh from Atlanta, Georgia. What are fermented foods? What does that mean, and why are they good for you? Fair. Yeah, this is a category, a food category, that's getting a lot of interest and attention. And honestly, guys, there are so many reasons to love fermented foods. They have an increased shelf life. They taste absolutely amazing. They're so zesty and tangy. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, but not all of them, they have probiotics. And probiotics helps our gut health and boosts overall health um, because the gut is connected to everything these days, as mm -hmm. we know. So what is a fermented food? We're basically taking an item like vegetable or milk, mm -hmm. we're combining it with a healthy bacteria or yeast to change its characteristics. So mm -hmm. it's almost like creating magic mm -hmm. in your kitchen, but you don't have to make it yourself. You yeah. can go to the store and you can buy it. So some common things that fall under the umbrella of fermented foods, we have um, miso, mm -hmm. we have yogurt. I love kimchi. Fermented oh, food. Kimchi, most popular. yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of wine? things that you could have. So oh. wine and sourdough bread are both fermented. But I knew wine was good for me. Let me take that one step further. So sourdough bread is fermented, but then we cook off the probiotics. And wine oh. is f usually filtered at the end after it's fermented, oh. so it doesn't have yeah, the probiotics. For, for people that want those probiotics, 
look for packages that actually say contains probiotics, and typically that will be in the refrigerated sections of the grocery store. But I think everyone should sample yeah, some fermented, fermented foods. foods. Yeah, and miso right. is delicious. Yes. Thank you, Joy. Thank, Thank you, Joy. So much. Got it. For more uh, nutrition information, head to today.com slash food. All right, coming up, look who's here. Country superstar Darius Rucker live right here in Studio 1A. We're going to find out about his, his very personal new album, and he's got one more great summer song just for us when the third hour today rolls on right after this. Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. Oh, we have to start tomorrow. Let her be. Oh God! And you talk about my singing. <laughs> Let her be. Oh, thank you for singing. Yeah, you did. Thank you for saving. It. Darius stuck the landing on that one. And then auto tuned me too. <laughs> Moment, just two guys from South Carolina singing on stage together. That was was that five years ago? Holy yeah, God. it's hard to believe. Wow, Craig had the chance to live out his rock star dreams with <laughs> three-time Grammy winner, real rock star <laughs> Darius Rucker. Of course, that was the classic song "Let Her Cry" from Darius's days as the lead singer of Hootie and the Blowfish. In his solo career, he has four number one country albums with hits like "All Right" and, of course, "Wagon Wheel." Well, now Darius is about to release his first album in six years, which is hard to believe. Uh, this one's called Carolyn's Boy, and he has been treating us to music all morning long. Going to give us one more song in just a bit, but Carolyn's Boy, welcome back. Well, thank you guys for having me. Thank you guys for having me, absolutely. You know, the, the album, in addition to being a tribute to your, to your late mother, a lot of it's also about your roots. Growing up in, in the low country of South Carolina, how much of it is, is a tribute to that part of your life? Oh, I, I, I think that all ties into one, you know making a tribute to my mom. We've lived in Charleston our whole lives. Mm -hmm. And so it's definitely a tribute to where we were born, where we were, where we were raised and how we were raised. I, mm -hmm. I keep telling people I was raised by a village because mm -hmm. you know, I lived in this great neighborhood. So yeah, it's all a big testament to that. Yeah. I love that. How would you say you're still that boy? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm still, I'm still so Darius. I, I, that's the thing. It's easy to be with, with my family and everything. I, I'm just, every day when I think about it, I, I, I'm, I'm, st I'm Still trying to do the same things I did as a kid, trying to be nice, trying to do, you know, trying to, you know, help people out and everything, and all that comes from my childhood. Mm. Yeah. I was, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was just reading. You've released a couple of singles from the from the album so far. One of them I didn't realize. Oh, Look me up. That's a cover of Rihanna's Oscar-nominated song from Wakanda Forever. What made you want to take on that song? I heard it in the movie, and then me and my manager were talking about. It. I wanted to do just a, a cover. I just want to do a song on this record. And we heard them, we, we, we didn't think we were going to put on the record, we cut huh. it. And when I heard it, when we cut it, I just thought, yeah. yeah it's just wow. Amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It is. For folks who haven't, you should, folks should ch definitely check that out. Um, you know, one of the things that doesn't get talked about a lot with, with you is, it, a lot of folks don't know this, you are, and have been since I've known you, extraordinarily generous with your time and your money. Uh, St. Jude's and just all these charities, a lot of folks don't even know about your own foundation. Where does that come from, mm -hmm. this, that, this drive to, to be so generous? That's 
a great question. It comes from straight from my mom. Mm. She taught us as kids, you know, not to help the less fortunate, to help people who need help. Because mm -hmm. even if they're more fortunate than you, you can help them, you can help them. I remember one time my, my older brother, uh, there was a, a lady lived down the road and, I, and her husband was in the Navy and he was gone. And so the yard was a little, her yard was a little bad. My brother went out and cut her grass and she gave him $20. Hmm. And he came home and he was bragging about that $20. My mom came home from work and he took a whipping and took that $20 <laughs> back down and gave Aww. it back to her. Good for and Kim. Like, like, you know, there's no way we, we wow. don't do that. And that was, that was how we were brought up, to, mm -hmm. to, to help other people. And, and I believe in that. I believe, yeah. and as, as more, as I get more and more fortunate in my life, I want to help more and more. Mm. You have. You, go ahead. I can't exactly. believe it's been 30 years since you released your first album. You can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Crack Beer View is, is still one of, you know, the highest grossing albums in the country. Yeah. I mean, like, how would you say you're a different person from back then? I mean, like, so much has happened to you in the last 30 years. I, I think the biggest thing is I've just grown up a lot. Like, when we put that record out, we were just in the middle of such a party, and we mm -hmm. were just kids. We were 20, in our mid-20s, just having a great time. You know, now I look back, and I, I wouldn't do anything different. You know, but but now I, we just now we know how to tour. Now we know how to, to do things. Now how to make records. Mm -hmm. Back then we were just flying by the seat of our pants, having a great time. Look at that picture, man. Yeah, Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> for, for like for like half a decade. So a lot of folks may not know this, but in addition to, to being a fantastic musician and father and friend, you're also a huge Gamecock. Yes. And, and it, it, you believe the Garnet in Black. You're actually singing the national anthem tomorrow at the season opener. You're going to do college game day on another network. There's somebody who wanted to send a message to you. Oh, wow. And I think we have the message. We're going to play okay. it for you right there. Darius. Hope you're doing great, my friend. I wish I could be up in New York City right now watching you perform, but we're a little busy down here in Columbia right now. Awesome. I can't wait to see you in Charlotte tomorrow night. Looking forward to hearing you perform the national anthem, and then I'm looking forward to seeing you down on the sideline when you go out for the opening coin toss and represent the Gamecocks the right way. Grateful for all you do for the state of South Carolina. Grateful for all you do for Gamecock Athletics. I will see you soon. Go Cox. USC coach, oh, uh, cool. head coach hey. Shane Beamer. Coach Beamer also wanted wanted you to have that. that oh, special that's all. Awesome. Well. One thing I got to do for them that was so cool. They built a brand new athletic facility for all the athletes, and oh. I went in there and I built a studio. Oh, nice. For if they like, Coach what? Beamer told me that he had to uh, he had to put a time limit on. He had to close it at midnight because he'd be going there at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> And they're in the studio, but I, I love the game. Of course, you built it. That's do. amazing. I love Rucker, it. don't go far. Don't you go anywhere as well. We got one more song coming up. It's the perfect one to send this into the weekend. A little beers and sunshine right after this. <laughs> I love to build the studio. Friday with one more song from Grammy winner Darius Rucker. And the country superstar saved a good one for us. Let's kick off this holiday weekend with Beers and Sunshine. Darius Rucker, take it away. Just wanna sit around and play. I'm gonna hit miles off the dock, kick back in my flip flops. 
Don't own nothing to the lender Nothing spinning in the blender The only thing on my agenda Is beers and sunshine About fires in summertime Backwoods nights in South Carolina There ain't nothing finer than me And my girl striking up a little lighter Everybody's down in a world gone crazy Don't know how to fix it But I think maybe turn on Say, let's get our friends and hit the lake. Grab a boat and get to float. A little buzz, then a little toasted. We're gonna hang and have a little fun now. Flying high like we'll never come down. We're gonna go until we run out of beers and sunshine. A bonfires in summertime. Backwoods nights in South Carolina. There ain't nothing finer than me and my girls striking over. For the long weekend, shall we shout out some of our amazing starts today? Yes, walking? yes. let's do it. First, we have Lorraine from New Jersey who tries to walk every day. Good job, Lorraine. Lorraine. Lawrence is next, and he keeps us walking streak even when he's traveling. Way to go, Way Lawrence. To go, Lawrence. How about Susan? Loves walking with a buddy no matter where they are. Susan. And Albert enjoys walking and says he has the same name, birth month, and birth year with Mr. Oh. Oh, there, there you go, Albert. Way to go, Albert. And finally, Michelle says she joined our Start Today community to keep herself motivated and to move. Michelle! Yay. Congratulations. You can get it on the fun, too. Scan the QR code to sign up for our newsletter or head to today.com slash start today to become a part of our wonderful yeah, well, running community. Yell walking. your name. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, that's the end of this week. But next week on the third hour of today, Kevin Bacon's going to be live here right. in Studio so 1A. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, go head to head in a musical game with Jimmy Fallon. Oh, I'm going to put my money on Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
no, no. Have a fantastic Have a holiday weekend, weekend. everybody. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Jimmy Fallon Friday, and he's getting the party started when we play That's My Jam. Then should we keep it or should we toss it? The hilarious Amy Poehler weighs in. And you'll be tripping when Anthony Anderson gets into a great debate with his mama, Doris. It's okay. It's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. All right, all right. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, guys. It is the very first day of the month of September. What? I know. Are we all checking our calendars going, what? We're all checking our calendars going, where did summer go? But I know. Yo, this also means we get to kick off the long weekend. And we're going to do it in style here because we want to remind you that summer's still here. It's still lingering. And we've got a whole bunch of fun. We've got games. We're going to have, this is going to be our show of fun. Okay? I think got it. fun is underrated. I do too. I think fun is way underrated. It's like I the last thing on the list. I would rather have a fun friend. Right. Then, uh, well, I was going to say I also want a kind friend and a funny friend, and they kind of all go hands in hand. But having somebody that lights up a room, yes, having fun, yes, and sometimes even in our families, it's like the last thing we tend to. Yeah, we got chores. You got to do this. You well, got to mind your manners. You got mothers. Be- Like, the least, the last thing on the list is fun. But why don't we change that? Let's be fun moms. Okay, no, not cool, no, moms. no, no, not cool. Here's what but I, let's have fun with our children. Okay, I think that here's where I get this is where it gets great to me. You want to have fun and be like dance party, woo, it's bedtime, woo, and then when it's time to be serious, yeah, you need to be taken seriously, right? But then they don't do that because now you're like, come on, no, you don't like it's like, no, 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 now I'm not that anymore. Yeah, but I That's think you changed. can be more than one thing. I'm trying Kids to are be smart. that. They know what you are, <laughs> they know you're both loving and fun. I think there's the problem is when I say fun mom you think cool mom and that's not what I'm going for I don't want to be like buddy buddies no with, you want to be fun like let's play like, let's like actually Roll play the put the phone down yeah. and play twister yeah yeah oh yeah that definitely that kind of definitely. stuff you know creative my daughter asked me when I she was like mom uh my youngest who's four how come sometimes you use the tone of voice that you tell us not to use how come you use it on us sometimes I was like this <laughs> And I was, you just realize that all of your, and I said, well, sometimes I use that tone because it's very serious. Yeah. I really want you to listen. Yeah. Okay. It's a serious matter. It's not like the fun stuff. When I use that tone, it's because it's serious, but it's kind of interesting to have those conversations no, I know. when everything's not, you know, crying chaos. No, to have I mean? a real a, conversation. Yeah, sometimes we have to do that. Okay. And they were like, yeah, but you tell us not to. And then they're <laughs> laughing and choking around, but it reminds us like. What we say comes echoing right back to us. And we can be a million different things. Yeah, we can. So there. Okay. okay. Um, but the, you know what? Speaking of fun, yeah. there's a survey that has us talking. We're so into it. It identified the best city to live in in the world. And drum roll, please. In the world. The best city to live in is? Vienna, Austria. Austria. Okay, that, by the way, that was formulated by the Economist Intelligence Unit's Global Li- uh, Livability, Livability Index. Index. So basically, they probably, fa- <laughs> <laughs> they probably factored in cost of living, health care, air quality, you know, all this stuff. That I've been matters. there before, have you? Yeah. Um, I don't remember. Well, then that doesn't sound so fun. <laughs> but, you know. You don't remember I mean, well, if you've ever you, been for there? Work, well, for you're work, hurting their feelings. No, I'll tell you why. Often for work, 
You had to you go to a lot of places. You travel to a lot of places yeah. and you land and shoot and turn around. Yeah. And it's not really being there. Well, I like being okay. there. I like the sausages. Okay. I like the sound of music, <gasps> landscape. Oh, my gosh. It's really Wait, beautiful. Wait, the other one was Denmark. That okay. was another. That was another one. They always say the happiness quotient in Denmark is well, look off. Look at it. It's Everyone's colorful. and they're riding bikes and they're riding boats. Everybody's having fun. Wait, okay. If you close your eyes and you think about taking a sabbatical, mm. or it can be a fantasy, mm. where in the world would you live? I think I have such a strong feeling about this one city because I traveled with my mom to this city, and I realize why people fall in love to this city. And it's Paris. And I know that it's a, oh, yeah. But I have to say there was an intimacy to Paris. Yeah. We sat in cafes and drank delicious coffee and had tiny meals because everything's smaller yeah, there. Yeah, that's why the women are smaller. And yeah. a friend of mine said, oh, why don't you come by my apartment? And I was like, she has an apartment in Paris? It was the tiniest, like as big as this, but in Cute. it, it had a little balcony overlooking one of the beautiful streets. She served us warm nuts warmed up. Did she here. put them in the Ta microwave? I don't know, but everything <laughs> was little and I, it just reminded me that small, beautiful things are all around. Totally. And it wasn't, it was just something about we walked the streets, we were in the left bank. It was beautiful. You have a vibe. I Because love New Orleans that. is yes. such a city like Paris. And it's the same. No, of yes. course. Yes, okay. For you how have about a you? vibe. Okay. We have a dream okay. of taking a sabbatical and going, and going to Spain. Because you hablo español. Oh, I would love a that. Bit, a little bit. Yeah, I tell speak us. Spanish. Yeah. And I would love to take the kids there, mm -hmm. live take there a for a year. I mean, I hope this dream comes true. It, it can. may or may not. It will. It but will. go and live there. Let the kids, put the kids into school. Okay. So that in the mornings we uh, live. Uh, yeah, you have your you regular know? days. And also, I don't think I'm a great, I'm a good, I was a good teacher. I will say that about myself. I'm not good at teaching my own children. Yeah, yeah. Because I might be a fun mom and a strict <laughs> mom, but I ain't a patient one. <laughs> I'm working at how how's yeah. working on patients. Yeah. yeah. And I'm always like, how what are we working on? And then when I'm like, how put on your shoes, put on your shoes. He goes, Mommy, what are we working on? He says, that? Oh yeah. He's he's you know, smart. someone said something very profound to me. You know that that prayer, love is patient, love is kind, yes. love is never boastful, all those things. They said if you want to find out where your Achilles heels are, things you need to work on, things that are good for you, take out the word love and put in your own name. Hoda is kind. Jenna is patient. Jenna is kind. Yeah. Jenna is never boastful. Whichever one pops up that is like, a, oh, that doesn't seem true, that's your one to work on. Can I tell you something yeah. hilarious? Oh, God. I can't you wait. You told me that? I did. I know, but I know no, I didn't but tell listen, everybody else. You haven't else. told the world, but you I told, told me. You. So I took that into my little yeah. toolbox yeah. Yeah. Have you when I start to get Angry? agitated yeah, yeah. and grumpy. grumpy and I like and I have when in those moments where I'm like put on your shoes put on your shoes I'm like <laughs> Jenna is patient Jenna, Jenna is, is kind. kind but you by the way you are all those things well, except not for all, patient that's true no you're not patient that's true but you're all the other things I know you're but kind, sometimes you're, you're, yeah. when you're not patient you're also not, not kind. kind true and so, then you're boastful yeah <laughs> because you're like I can put on my <laughs> shoes faster than you how <laughs> So we're gonna play a game. Which one's more fun? So it's pretty simple. We'll two get options. two options. And we decide which one's more fun. First up, roller coasters or water slides? Roller, roller coasters. coasters! Definitely. Oh, definitely. A water slide has repercussions. Uh, yes. Okay, next one. Board, Board games, games or lawn games? games. Lawn, lawn games! Because you can play them in the summer. I like a board game in the winter. Yeah, I like an outdoor. And it's still, yeah. remember, you said September, summer. Yeah, okay. okay. Making, making s'mores or, or making, making a Sunday. Sunday. Making, making s'mores. S'mores have so much in common. Jello Jell shot, shot or an ice, ice luge. luge. What's an ice luge? You know, you put your face on that cold block. I've only done it no, once. No, 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 no. <laughs> Jello, Jello shot. shot. Okay. Sprinklers or water balloons. balloons? Sorry, environment. Sprinkler water balloons. balloons. Sprinklers are. So, you don't have to clean up. There's I know, no mess. You, I know, but water balloons are more surprising. They hurt if they get hit in the okay. face. I'm speaking from experience. Okay, coming up next. There's no one more fun than Jimmy Fallon. He stopped by recently to play one of his favorite games from his show. That's my jam. Coming up after this.
comes to fun and games on TV, there is only one king, and it's our pal from across the street, Jimmy Fallon. Recently, Jimmy stopped by to host the Vinyl Countdown from his NBC show, That's My Jam. We teamed up with Savannah and Donna, and we competed for the Golden Boombox. Mm -hmm. Take a look. Here's how the vinyl countdown works. When it's your turn, you're going to pull a record from the crate in front of you. Then you'll have to oh. get your partner. Jenna just looked at no, no, the first one's a yeah, dummy one. Oh. Uh, okay. You have to get your partner seated across from you to guess the band or artist listed on that record. You can make any physical gestures, say whatever you want, except the actual name on the record. Once your teammate guesses correctly, toss the album to the side and spin the table for the other team to take their turn. If you're holding a record when time runs out, your team loses Ooh. that round. So it's Drop just it. luck. Okay. Yeah. We're going to play luck. two. Two rounds. Here we go. Okay. 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 Take your positions. Ready to go? Yeah. We're going to yeah. start okay. with you, Jenna. Okay. Okay. Ready? Woof! 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 Dog! 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 Musician! Dog! Miami! Dog! I don't know. Dog! Miami's good. Oh, people! Yes! Yeah. Let's go throw it! Oh my God. Then move, we'll move it. Here we go. Okay. okay. Donna! You got it, Donna! Oh! Um... You lost me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Give me something um, else. Abby Road. Uh, Beatles. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. love that. Thank you. Okay. Love me. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I don't know. I was... Okay. It, it's a rabbit who's not good. A rabbit who is not good. Oh, bunny. Yes. Well, good. Right well, the way. Well, well, yeah. Good job. Yeah. Well. You got it. Whoop. Snoop Dogg. Yep. We oh. are. The other one. Uh, J Lo. Body, adi, 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 adi. Give me another. Um, a horse. What's a horse? Why did I get it wrong? What was it? Megan the Stallion. So what happened? Why did I get the red arrow? Because <laughs> now, if you were holding it, that means no. You don't want to hold Time it when the buzzer goes off. Time Time right right so now. now it's another round? Round two. Let's go! Let's go! It's round two. Okay. Thank you. We'll start Thanks, with you. Wait, we have to no. go around. We'll start with Donna. Okay. We'll start okay. with Donna, right? Okay. Okay. Now, here's okay. the deal. Okay. Okay. Guys, this, wait, this category, wait, this category. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Yeah, that's the first. Wait, hold on a second. This category is edible arrangements, Okay. Now, Whoa. these are all artists with food in their name. Oh, artists with okay. food. I yeah. love an edible oh, arrangement. Okay. I should say also that last round, these are all, they're all animals. These are, no, these are, these are, these are, these are, these are all bands with an animal you in their name. Okay, well, for editing's sake, we're putting it in now. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Okay, go, okay, go, go. We still did well. Go, we, we still did well. well. All right, okay. this round, by the way, is worth 100,000 points. It's food. still anyone's game. Food. Hoda, you're going to start us off this time. Oh, I am? Yeah, you're going to start us off. Oh, yeah, because I haven't done it. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Think food. Now this is, is this yes. a dummy? Yeah, yes, a dummy one. So you throw it, okay. toss it. All right, here we go. Whenever you're ready, go. Uh, Halloween, what's the thing? Pumpkin? Yeah. Smash pumpkin. Yes. Oh, great. Way to go, girl. Um, okay, when it's hot outside, I have a little bit of uh, hot cocoa. No, in the, I mean, hot outside. Oh, hot, hot. Hot. Uh, hot. It, when I'm frozen, it is cold. No, <laughs> ice tea. Ice cold. Right, you got it. You got it. Okay. You got it. Keep going. Okay. Hot I don't cocoa. want to. Um, it's a bean, and then another four Red hot chili peppers. Um, no, uh, they sang that song. Let's get it started in oh. here. Okay. Wow. Does it rhyme with anything? In it? What? Fergie's oh, in Fergie. it. Oh, Fergie! Black Eyed Peas. All you have to do is say Fergie. Okay. <laughs> okay um, I'll tell you what I want. What I really, really oh, want. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right, Yes, go, 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 go. My turn. Yo, you want oh. this one? <sighs> Winners of the Golden Boombox. Congratulations. Hey. You are the champs. Wait, Sorry. This is unbelievable. Wait, Donna was getting. You were playing the whole game like this, by the way. You were so scared. But that was By great. the way, this is the well, best is game so ever. All right, congratulations. You won the Golden Boombox. You know what? Thank you. I put that boombox in a very prominent spot. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Coming up next, we're dusting off the old pedicab <laughs> for a little wheeling and dealing around New York City. After we this. love to wheel and deal.
Okay, you never know what or who you're gonna see in the streets of New York City. And you might even see Hoda in a pedicab. <laughs> With you, hello. Well, that's true, I was there. Okay, it was a wild ride. We took it around the bustling Central Park and we surprised some unsuspecting people with a little wheeling and dealing. Take a look. You know what we missed? We, we missed wheeling and dealing. We thought it was time to go back to Central Park, see our friends. Yes. Central Park's the place to be. It sure is. Yeah. Oh, hello. hello. Listen, are you ready, family? Ready? All right, how many benches are in Central Park? 5,000, 7,500, or 10,000? Oh, it's I'm a big thinking, park. So I think it's really it's big. So we go all the way. Wait, are we saying 10,000? We're saying 10,000. 10,000. Jenna, that's right. What do they win? You guys get a personalized tour of Central Park with a dedicated tour guide. guide. You yes. like how that was I a southern God. God. <laughs> oh, we're happy y'all are here, y'all. Because we are wheeling and dealing. We decided to take a walk in Central Park, and I'm like, scary. Is this, is this for real? <laughs> y'all are a very beautiful wow. couple. Not far from here, which museum hosts fashion's biggest night out every year? Is it MoMA? Is it the Met Ball? Or is it the Whitney? The Met. Yeah! We hear y'all want to go on more dates. We do. We are getting you two tickets aboard City Cruises, New York's dining cruise, the Bateau. Oh, my it's God. It's supposed to be fabulous. Oh, you're also given VIP treatment. Yay! Wow. Another date. <laughs> Another date. Nothing stopped us from playing our game, not even Mother Nature. Wow, what is falling at us? Is this the pollen? <laughs> <laughs> Central Park is where we are now. What was the name of the cafe from Friends that the characters like to go to? Oh, I was know it? this one. Central Park. Yes, it was! See, watching Friends pays off. It sure did. We're going to go see some Major League Baseball here in New York, so we'll get you your tickets. Yes, and we hope you, have and a hope you all enjoy it. Thank you. Have Thank you so much. Fun. Imagine that you're just walking through Central Park, minding your own business, riding your bike, strolling through, and then two crazy people stop you and give you free stuff. It's fun. It's the best ever. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to give you a question. If you get it right, you'll get a prize. The Beehive is especially excited for which artist to go on her re Renaissance tour this summer? Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, or Beyonce? Beyonce? Yes! Okay, guys, guess what you just won? You're not going to believe it. Two yeah. tickets to see the Jonas Brothers! Oh! You can pick your Jonas Brother. <laughs> Come on, New Zealanders! Which pop star is playing Glinda the Good Witch in the upcoming adaptation of Wicked? Is it Ariana Grande, Dua Lipa, or Pink? Oh, Ariana. Ariana Grande, you said you are right. Everybody's obsessed with pickleball, so y'all have won a gift card for a private court rental at City Pickle right here at Central Park at the Woolman Ring. Thank you, Carter and Jenna. Wheeling and dealing. <laughs> don't you love to so wheel and fun. deal? We the love best. it. All right. Um, don't and giving away things. It's anything free is good it's in New York. Super fun. All right. Coming up next, more fun and games when Amy Poehler and Martha Stewart stop by after this.
good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, we're coming to this early, right? But it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stuff with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. Okay, as you may know, Jen and I have different philosophies when it comes to being tidy and getting rid of junk, but we put our opinions aside when Amy Poehler stopped by. That's right, because she produces the series, The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. And here's what happened when we presented Amy with some random items we found on Amazon in a game of keep it or toss it. All right, so this is what we did, Amy. We ordered five best-selling items. So these are their best sellers off of a, a website called Amazon. I've never okay. heard of it, never heard of it. <laughs> so many of these items are in many homes in America. And the question is, would you keep it or would you toss it? Here's the first one, miss. Here we go. Keep it or toss it. A it mini is a mini waffle maker. Ooh, this scratches a lot of itches for me. <laughs> I love food. I love small food. It's, and it's compact. Doesn't take up a lot also, of space in your house. Look at the color. That's hard to toss. The color is really good. Robin, it what are you blue. thinking? Look, uh, this is going to be hard for me because I'm not an organizer, but I say keep and use it once a year. Yes. Okay. Uh, By the way, size. I think because if it was big and bulky, you would say no. Yeah, that's true. That tucks beautifully we, into a drawer somewhere. Yeah, we we heard it here. Hoda yeah. says size yes. matters. So, <laughs> Okay. Right. I don't Wait, know what we are trying to be. set her up. Do you have somebody for Hoda? Oh yeah, let's talk. Let's talk I later. Do. I'm into it. Okay. okay. You don't know what these are, okay. but they're Crocs. Oh. Yeah. Well, I am the mother of two teenage boys, and Crocs are very, very in right now. So Crocs are have never been hotter. So, and these <laughs> last a long time. Okay. So I would say, you know, as far as uh, synthetic uh, materials, <laughs> these last a long time. I mean, so I'm gonna say keep these. Okay. Oh, I do they Crocs. smell? No, you can plastic. hose them down with oh, a hose. That's yeah, they're great. Plastic. Yeah, okay. they're really good okay. to clean. All right, Jenna, reveal uh, okay, this one. Here I we can't go. wait. Ooh, oh, what is, what is this? The Brazilian bum cream. Brazilian bum bum, 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 bum cream to rub on your bum bum. <laughs> it, help, it, it helps visibly tighten the appearance of skin. Oh, it's oh. one of those. Infused well, with all powerful yes. Garnard extract. I would never uh, suppose uh, that I know what's good for a Brazilian bum. So <laughs> uh, I would say if, if you feel like that's something you want to wax and shine, go for it. <laughs> I would say keep it. Keep it. So far, Wait, we're doing okay. no death no, cleaning. Some, some, I, I'm not a death cleaner. You're kind of hoarding. Okay, let's, yeah. see. Uh, let's get rid of something. Okay. Okay. Like this one. Oh, I know you. What is a this? Scalp uh, massager. Scalp massager. Scalp massager. Oh, oh, now, what's good my, about these is you can uh, you can use it on a kid. Yes, and then you go, they put them right to sleep. Okay. So but we're this keeping, does yeah. feel like you could just also use your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but Hoda really likes I it. Like it. <laughs> Amy, are you going to take it away from her? Hoda, just real quick, give me your PIN number. <laughs> just real quick, Hoda, tell me, tell me your social security. Um, I'm going to say... Uh, You're tossing it. You are. I think I'm going to toss this only because uh, it feels like you could uh, you could feel good if you're like, I don't need. This could be something you say, I don't you're need. Right, she's right. She just but also, you know what? Let's keep it, too. Who cares? It's the Today Show. Right? All right. We're not in Sweden. We yeah. can keep whatever right. we want Last on the show. Last one. Come on, okay. Amy. Come on, see. Amy. It is... <laughs> oh. This is a best-selling item? Yeah. Wow, it's, it's a solar out. garden outdoor statue with... Succulents. Okay, the reason why uh, this is so cute, <laughs> and whoever makes it, and I can't wait to get many free ones sent to me after this segment, but you can have it. Um, I would toss this only because I feel like if I was walking in my garden, I would get scared by it. <laughs> and I would be like, oh. I would get scared every time, and then I would realize it Doesn't was Doesn't it kind of look like the things that power the Disney yeah. World rides? It does. It has like a dinosaur quality. Yeah, it's it's land before time. Yeah, it's very sweet, but it would scare me in the night. All right, and, uh, so that Or I would trip over it by accident. But the thing is, you can yeah. turn it on and off. No. Yeah, the lights. Okay. Don't I don't try know to what to tell it. you. I mean, I'm pretty <laughs> harsh when it comes to these things, and I say get rid of it. All right. This gentle art of Swedish death cleaning is streaming now on Peacock. Amy is so much fun. And you know who else always comes to play? Yeah. Martha Stewart. Oh, she does. When an icon like Martha is in the house, we have to get her to take on everything. So we put her on the bench to get her rulings on some hot topics in a round of All, All Rise, Rise with, with Judge Martha. Martha. Take a look. 
Okay, the gavel. first topic, gavel. Did I say gravel? Yeah. <laughs> Typical. Okay, first topic, Hoda's lemon juicing hack. Yeah. Martha, here's the thing. Uh, Hoda loves a hack. She loves this hack. She demonstrated this on the show recently. We're going to show it to you first. Show you. Okay. Go ahead. Show well, me. Hoda. Take a skewer. Take it and put it in the hole. Navel. The navel? Watch me work. Can I have a little? Wait. Oh. oh, wait, that one ripped. Ooh. Wait, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> This is the worst hack I have ever seen. No, it isn't. It's, that's the worst hack. Oh. If you want a good workout, yes. do it that way. Okay. And then you have to then cut it in half and get out the rest of the juice. Because <laughs> you're going to waste. A, a lemon now but costs a dollar ninety nine. You're wasting. Each. Martha, okay, just said you're okay. wasting. But if I do it right, it all comes out, and there are no seeds or pulp, Martha. There are now seedless lemons. Ooh. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> All right. So your ruling on her is what? Is no good. No good. <laughs> okay. No good. All right. All right. Next up, Padma Lakshmi. She says she wants to break your record one day, Ooh. as the oldest woman on Sports Illustrated, uh, the the swimsuit edition. Um, Miss Padma, who also just said goodbye to Top Chef. Okay. So what is your ruling on that? Maybe that's your plan. <gasps> that would be good. You think that's good? Sure. Good luck, Padma. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. The next topic. Um, oh. Who was more attractive, young Robert De Niro or young Al Pacino? The internet is divided, totally. and we need Martha to break the yes. divide. Yes. Yes. Well, I look at those things on, on Instagram. You <laughs> yeah. know, they take you from young to yeah. old, and, you know, Brad Pitt beats them all. But um, but actually, I really think that Robert and Robert De Niro was not as attractive as Al Pacino, so as, Al Pacino. as a young boy. Yeah. So uh, you're you're Al Pacino. You're Team yeah. Al. We were, we were, we were Team Al too. We were okay. too. And they both had babies. What's your verdict on that? At, 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 at late, yeah, in their 80s, 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 80s. Yeah. How do you well, feel? I just saw both of them. Yeah. And they're like they're like, all right. <laughs> they're a little old, and, and don't you want to see your kids graduate from college? So. <laughs> That's good your lady. Good luck. luck to both of them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Speaking of age gaps, can there be too many years between a couple? Like, if you were going to date somebody who was younger, what would you say is the youngest you would go? Well, I remember going on a trip once um, with all my nieces and nephews, and and um, Uncle Bobby came along. Yeah, I was dating this cute guy. Yeah. And on the trip, I found out that he was younger than my daughter. I then, I then had to set some limits. Did you break up with him on the trip? No. No. You After. waited till you got home. <laughs> you waited till we got home. Oh, my God. I, I think you have to just make up your own mind. Whatever feels yeah. right for you, right? And don't publicize it, for God's sakes. You know. just, just keep it your quiet. Fun. Yeah, keep it quiet. Yes. Yeah. All right. Never I like that. Never tell his age. Never yeah. tell his like age. <laughs> Final ruling. Yes, Martha. Thank you. Martha, thank we you, adore thank you. you. Thank you so much for we coming. We can't wait till we're coming over. I know. Thank okay. you for having oh, yeah. us. Come soon. It's a date. We, we will. can we recreate will. that Tina Turner picture okay. and bed with you. Yes. Oh, well, then they might think we're a little weird. <laughs> That's okay. We, okay. we don't care what you're, they you're think. You're TV host. So <laughs> you have to watch out. Okay, that's the final answer. When Martha talks, people listen. Yeah, mm -hmm. she really should have her own show. Okay, coming up next, Hoda and I go toboggan to toboggan and one of our coolest challenges ever after this.
Okay, Jenna and I never miss an opportunity for a little friendly competition. But earlier this year, we got a little things got a little icy in Quebec City. That's true. And when in Canada, do as the Canadians do. So we went head to head in a toboggan race. Take a look. Together, Hoda and I have done our fair share of winter activities. From curling to official t-shirt tossers at the Rangers game and everything in between. Even a polar plunge into the freezing Atlantic waters. Well, one of us. I dove under and you just went like this? I went like this. <laughs> one of us dove and the other one didn't. So in Quebec, we both suited up for our next friendly competition. Today's event, the toboggan. The toboggan site at Dufresne Terrace has been a Quebec attraction since 1884. That's 139 years, even older than the Chateau Frontenac next door. Hi. Hi, Mark. Hi there. Owner Mark Duchesne was our fearless toboggan guide. It's one of my favorite phrases. because you don't Ride the ride toboggan. toboggan. You, know you why? actually do say, say ride that. the toboggan you know, all the you time. You know why I say that? Because you don't have any control. Absolutely. You just got to let it go. Is that kind of the gist of what we're going to be doing? That's all you have to do. Just sit tight and hang on. This is actually going to be a little competition. Uh -huh. How do you go faster than the other person? Well, uh, first of all, you need to have a very heavy breakfast. So it's a weight thing? Yeah, well, that helps Bye. a lot. Well, I don't know. Do you yeah. sit like, like a chair? Yeah, elbows in, elbows knees in. Elbows in, knees in. Yeah. The direction of the sled is really well controlled. Down. And it's straight down. It's very fast, up to 40 miles an hour. 40? Yeah. I don't wait, even wait, 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 wait. I thought Mark said 40 miles an hour. The polar she plunge is going to plunge you know me what? all the way no, to victory. You know what's sad? She can't <laughs> let it go. No, I can't. We were ready to face off Quebec City style. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about my chances. I'm going to close my eyes and go. You got to set it free and let it go. Jenna don't have a chance. Bye, Jenna. Bye. See you at the bottom. I'm going to get my body tight like Mark asked me to. Elbows in, knees in. It's all about the form. She thinks she's just going to win it. It's the form, and I've been practicing. Bye, Hoda. Let's go! But we have to walk up the sleds ourselves. I feel like we just climbed Mount Everest. <laughs> We're high up. Oh my gosh. We went from wildly competitive <laughs> to just wanting to survive. We just want to get down. Mila, Paul, I love you. This is your first Mila, time. Watch mommy! The louder you yell, the faster oh you go. We were terrified. And then we were off to the races. Three, two, oh one, go! Ah! Let's go to the instant replay. <laughs> that was so fun. Okay, now do you have anything you'd like to say to the people? Congratulations. That won't come out again, so accept it. I'm a good sport. Yes, you are. I will never bring up this again if you never ever bring up the words polar plunge. Fair yeah. enough? Deal. We just rode the toboggan. We rode the toboggan. Bye. So I'm just not going to say anything about it because, you know, we could see who I was just want to say again because I'm working on my sportsmanship. Congratulations. Thank you. Do you remember when you didn't do the polar <laughs> plunge? All right. And can we also thank, I know it came from deep inside. I don't know. We want to thank our sponsor, Bonjour Quebec. Quebec for making our trip, but which was so magical. Really fun. All right, coming up next, Anthony Anderson and his hilarious Mama Doris get ready to hash it out in the great debate after this.
Okay, Anthony Anderson is one of the funniest people around. And now we know where he got a sense of humor from, from his mama, Doris. Oh my gosh, they both recently stopped by. We thought there'd be some fun. We'd give them some hot, hot topics and then have them work out their differences in a great debate. It was hilarious. Check it out. Guys, we got a topic, and you'll each have 20 seconds to make your case. Hit your bell, and we'll choose the winner for each one. So okay. you make your case, hit your bell, and then it's the other turn. Uh, all right, all here's right. the first topic, okay? This Taking, is for Anthony. Well, yes, Anthony starts. Taking your shoes off on an airplane. Let's Anthony? Put 20 seconds on the clock. Go. You should never take your shoes off on an airplane. One, for sanitary reasons. <laughs> Two, they might be funky. But three, <laughs> if you have feet like my mother, who doesn't have toenails. My mother clipped all ten of her toenails off her feet and, and paints the top of her toenails to get the illusion that she still has nails. So no, you should never take your shoes off on a plane. All right. Oh, okay. Mama Doris, you Mama Doris. Rebut. Now you do the opposite. Why? Yes, you could take your shoes off on a plane. Long as you got socks on. Ah. Okay. Now, getting back to Andy's question, he a lie. I did not pick all my toenails off. How many? <laughs> How many? I went to Kai's and got them professionally taken off. <laughs> but are they off? Yeah. Are you wearing socks right now? No. Uh. Okay, then take your shoes off. So the winner is. Oh, I, I hate to, to do it. But this one has to go. Anthony. Anthony. One for Anthony. Anthony. And don't worry, Mama Doris. We got more. Here we go. Our next debate topic: <laughs> sharing a hotel room as an adult son and mom. Yes or no, Mama Hell Doris? Oh no, no, no! I don't want to say his no. Well, <laughs> they feel this is a family but, show. This is a family show. Rusty butt. This is a family show. Shower. <laughs> yeah. No, and he got ugly feet too. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, uh. Okay. All right, he fought now. Uh. Okay, hit the bell. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, Anthony, you have to take the position that it is in fact a good idea to share a room yes. with your mother. It is a good idea to share a hotel room with my mother because my mother has been without a man for 11 years, <laughs> and I refuse to call a stranger daddy. So I need to know the comings and the goings of the people she has in her room that's adjoining mine. Enough said. All right. Oh. All right, we're going with Mama, Mama Doris. Doris. Hey. It was the word rusty butt that yeah. got me. Yeah. Here we go. Last topic. Planned itinerary versus winging it. Anthony, you're up first. Uh, winging it. I'm an adventurous person. Uh -huh. uh, I throw caution to the wind. And if we're going to go to Cape Town, mama, <laughs> you don't make a plan. You just go. All right? You just go to Africa. And you go to the 56 different countries that they have in Africa. And you have fun. You don't plan anything. You go on a safari. You see the little kids. You, you, do, you, you buy things. You have fun. No plans needed. All right. All right, so I guess you need a plan, Mama Doris. Yes, you don't call me at no last minute. Talk about going to no damn Cape Town. On a safari, I'm scared of birds, let alone a monkey run across my back. No way. And the Obama thing, you called me at 12 hours before the plane landed. No, hi, Obama, but I'm sorry I missed you, but you can't call me at the last minute. You can, you can give it to my mama. Give it to my mama. Yeah, we have to. We have Sorry. To. Mama. <laughs> yeah. mama Doris, you are a star. Yes. I know it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, baby. Tell him. <laughs> Wait, Mama Doris needs brilliant. a late night show. Yes. yes, I do. I do. No, you don't. Yes, yes. I do, because I like to cuss. Yes. Okay. <laughs> There's nobody She's like Doris. So, nobody like her. It was, we, it was so funny. We, we couldn't, couldn't laugh. We couldn't, couldn't stop. stop laughing. Okay, okay we'll be back <laughs> after this. Oh, <laughs> God.
All right, that'll do it for us, guys. We hope you have a great Labor Day weekend. Yeah, y'all enjoy the long weekend, and we'll see y'all Monday. Mm -hmm. The sun is shining and we fired up the grill, y'all. Join me, Jocelyn Delk Adams, for a summer barbecue to remember. As a chef and cookbook author, I love to add a modern twist to classic recipes. With my tips, you can host an outdoor cookout that looks effortless and won't cost a fortune. Bringing all of your loved ones together, it makes the day that much sweeter. Booze, this party's going to be epic. Growing up, I absolutely loved summer barbecues. For me, it just felt like a time to get family and friends together and really just enjoy the weather and each other and some good food. My inspiration for a party comes from a variety of places. I love everything from travel to new restaurants. It all sort of kind of informs all of my ideas and decision making when I'm throwing a party. I guess you could call me an events rebel. I really love to break the rules. And I love that because it's really fun to sort of have something unexpected at your event. The first thing that's most important with creating an event that you absolutely love is starting with the vibe and building it with your personality. If you could bottle my personality, it would probably be like a bright orange color, so that's gonna be all through this event. I love throwing barbecues outside. If you've got a pool, which we happen to have, like why wouldn't you set an entire event around that? You know you are always at a great party when the playlist is hot. So I wanted to focus on creating a playlist that had a lot of fun, energetic songs that made people wanna get up and party. I love games at events. Seriously, if we do not have games at my event, it's not one of my events. I love everything from activities that I actually make up. I mean, it's all about making sure that your guests have a good time and games help with that. Next, make sure that you stay organized. I am truly type A, y'all, okay? I am a person who lives and breathes by spreadsheets. When I'm thinking about an event, I start with the spreadsheet so I can stay organized, keep my guests in there, keep what I've ordered, keep what I'm serving. Literally every single detail goes in that spreadsheet. For your guest list, it's truly important that you spend a lot of time thinking about who you want seated at your table. I decided to make this party all about the amazing gals in my life. I really wanted it to be this mix of amazing women that I appreciate and who I'm inspired by. And finally, create a unique menu. When I start to think about my menu planning for my barbecue, I really wanna knock my guest socks off. I love to incorporate things that are in season. So a couple recipes I'm thinking about are maybe a watermelon salad. Watermelon is in season right now, so that's gonna be so fresh. Also, corn is in season. So, and I've got this like amazing corn pudding, but the key is the, the corn is grilled. So it's like a nice, Nice time to actually use the grill, get some nice char on that corn, and actually give it some nice texture and bite. I think I know exactly how I want this day to flow, so let's get in the kitchen and start getting that menu going. For this barbecue, I selected some of my favorite recipes that I'm gonna show you how to make. First, we're gonna start with my simple ribs. Then we're gonna move on to my elote fried corn pudding from my new cookbook, Everyday Grand, along with my watermelon salad, and then finally, my berry rhubarb punch. We're gonna get started with my simple ribs recipe, and it starts with a dry rub. I've got some Cajun seasoning here. I've got some kosher salt, gotta get some nice salt in there. I've got some mustard powder. And then I've got onion and garlic powder. I'm gonna add both of those in here. Black pepper, some smoked paprika, and I've got some chili powder. Cumin, I love cumin in literally everything. And finally, I've got some brown sugar to add some sweetness. 
And then we're just gonna do a quick whisk of all of this, combining it. So I started making my own spice rubs at home when I realized how easy it was to do. Like you could literally just go in your pantry, grab all of your favorite ingredients and pull together something that's explosive flavor wise. I happen to like a lot of different flavors in my dry rub because I want a lot of different sensations to happen when you bite into that rib, right? You want that sweet, you want that heat, you want that nuance of flavor. And so all of these different components are gonna pull that off. And once that's combined, we're gonna get that on our ribs. These are beef ribs. And I'm going to grab some oil spray. So I like to use the oil spray. It's a little bit more controlled and it just kind of keeps things a tiny bit cleaner during this process. The oil is going to become an adhesive for our dry rub. And then we're gonna start to add our dry rub right over our ribs. And you can add as much or as little as you want. The purpose of a dry rub is really to get that flavor penetrated into our ribs. And it's gonna take a little time because we're not breaking this down with what you would usually find in a wet rub. I'm gonna flip these over. We're gonna do another spray. And then we're gonna get that dry rub all up in there as well and you really wanna push it into the meat so it really penetrates and you get all of that flavor. My favorite thing about barbecues are definitely the ribs. It's my favorite recipe. It's the quintessential barbecue recipe, right? So I think that all of my side dishes are gonna be the perfect complement to this main dish because this is really hearty, but it's got so much flavor, but everything else is sort of light and refreshing. So it's a perfect complement. All right, these look nice and rubbed down. So I did a quick rinse of my hands and now we're gonna get these ready to go into the fridge. I've got some heavy duty foil because we wanna make sure that every little crevice, everything is covered so we really get that marinade to seep in. I'm gonna go one rack at a time here. Really get it covered. The ribs are wrapped and ready to go. I'm going to add these to my baking sheet and then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for about six hours at least so we can really get that marinade in there. And then we'll be ready to grill. All right, our ribs are marinating and now when we come back, we're gonna get into our sides. While our ribs are marinating, I'm gonna get started on my elote fried corn pudding. This recipe was inspired by my trip to Mexico City and I wanted to really sort of mix in some of that authentic Mexican flavor with some of my southern roots. The first step is in grilling our corn. I've got some shucked corn here 
and I'm going to add a little vegetable oil to the outside of it so we can make sure that this doesn't stick to the grates once we're grilling. Now I'm gonna take these out to the grill. I love adding in that char and that bite of grilled corn and it's an amazing way to use it while it's in season too. Now that we've grilled our corn, it's time to get started on our filling. So I'm going to start here with some Mexican crema that's gonna go into our big bowl. This is so rich and creamy, it's gonna add so much flavor. And then I've got some melted butter. We've got four eggs here, and it's best that you crack them outside of the big bowl, so if you get any shell, it doesn't get into your major mixture here. Now I want to zest some lime so I can add in some citrus flavor. It's really gonna brighten this up. Now I've got some sugar. If you've ever had corn pudding in the South, you know it's a little bit sweet, so we gotta add in that sweet. I'm adding in some cornstarch. This is gonna help thicken everything up. And then a few spices to add some additional flavor. I've got some garlic powder, and I've got some cumin. Now this is where I get to add our grilled corn that we took off the cob. You can get that nice bite and that texture from those kernels. This is creamed corn that you can find just right in the can in your grocery store. And it's a very different texture from that grilled corn we made earlier. We're also gonna add in some cotilla cheese. I'm going to mix all of this together, make sure it's nice and combined. Before we add this to our casserole dish, I'm just gonna lightly spray this so we can make sure that it doesn't stick. And then we're just gonna pour all of our corn pudding mixture right into our casserole dish. I'm gonna add some foil to this so we can have a nice even bake and it doesn't brown too much. Now I'm gonna pop this in the oven and we're gonna let this set up and get so nice and beautiful and brown and then we'll be ready to serve. Our corn pudding is out of the oven and let's check it out. Oh my goodness. You can just see all of that grilled corn that's come to the top and this sort of creamy, custardy texture. I like to add some decorations and really take it to another level. I like to add a little bit more of the cotilla cheese. And then I also like to strategically place a few little limes here, little lime slices. Adds a little color as well. I'm gonna add some cilantro too. And then finally, I'm gonna sprinkle on a little tahini, and that little brightness with that chili and lime flavor is just gonna take this up to like a whole nother level. It's so good. Our corn pudding is ready to serve, and I know the guests are gonna love this. Now it's time to get started on my watermelon salad. This watermelon salad is so perfect for this barbecue because watermelon's in season, it's sweet, it's juicy, and it reminds me of childhood when I used to have watermelon every summer. Also, this recipe is important to me because, you know, watermelon sometimes can be pretty controversial for black people. We can feel uncomfortable sometimes having it because of the history associated with it. So with this recipe, I really wanted to sort of say, we can reclaim it, we can feel comfortable having it again, and I hope that it brings up more positive light towards this food. The first step to making my watermelon salad is pickling some onions, and this is gonna give that nice tart flavor. People have no idea how easy it is to pickle onions at home, and I'm gonna show you. So I've got some water, I'm gonna add this to my little pot here, some white vinegar, some sugar, and some salt and then I'm gonna crank on our heat here. And we're gonna let this get to about medium-high heat. We wanna really let that sugar dissolve, and then it's gonna be ready for pickling our onions. Our sugar has dissolved. I'm just gonna pop a garlic clove in here for some additional flavor. And then I'm gonna pour this right over our onions. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna cover this up. 
And now this is gonna go in the fridge for about two hours. Now we're gonna make our chipotle dressing. This recipe starts with our shallots. I'm going to add some oil. We wanna get our shallots sizzling in this medium heat so we can get them nice and tender. All right, these look good to go. I'm gonna add these into our blender. Now I'm gonna add in some lime juice, some red wine vinegar. Got a little honey too. Dijon mustard. Some chipotle, I'm gonna add this right on in. Nice kick of flavor, we love that. And then finally, I've got some salt and pepper. Okay. Look at that beautiful color. You can tell when the dressing is done because it's nice and smooth. You see that chipotle has blended in and it's thickened up a bit. And this is gonna be absolutely perfect on our watermelon salad, y'all. I've got my watermelon here and I'm gonna start breaking this down. You wanna make sure you have a super sharp knife. And then also, under my cutting board, I've got a little surprise here. I've got some wet paper towel right up under it to make sure that this doesn't slip and slide. It's gonna make sure that this stays in place. To begin, I'm gonna cut off the ends of my watermelon. And then I also like to cut straight down the middle. This makes it easier when you're dealing with a much larger watermelon. You can break it down much quicker. Oh yeah, look at that. I like to get it to a stable position as quickly as possible because it's much easier to maneuver and then it's not gonna roll around a lot. We want to start to take off the sides. So we're gonna remove the rind and you can actually start to do this based on just looking at the top and seeing where it guides you. And as you remove that, just put it right into your discard ball. We're gonna get off as much of this as possible and then we're gonna go right back around once we're done and then just clean up and get off anything that we didn't before. And then once you have all of those edges and it's pretty bright and red, this is where we're gonna actually start to cut it into strips. We're making a salad, so I'm gonna go for bigger pieces. And I'm gonna take these ones in the center and then we're gonna break these down into cubes. I'm gonna cut again into wedges. And then I'm gonna cut right across again. And there you go. Now it's time to assemble our salad. I've got our cubed watermelon here and I'm just gonna add this into a big bowl. I'm gonna also add in some cucumber. I've got some heirloom tomatoes, which are quite special. The seeds are passed down from farmers every single season, so it's a special sort of hybrid there. Going to mix all of this together. And now I'm gonna add in some greens. I've got some mint, some arugula, and some basil. Sprinkle all of that in. Just kinda mix that in as well. And this is such a beautiful, colorful salad. All right. Now we're gonna add in that dressing we made earlier. Then I'm gonna do a big toss and get all of these ingredients to just really kind of soak in that dressing. What works so great about this salad is you're just going to get so many different flavor profiles. Like that sweetness from the watermelon is just going to complement that chipotle spice with that you get from the dressings. It's really sort of well balanced because of all of those flavors. Now I'm gonna transfer this to our pretty bowl. Perfect. And then I'm gonna just dress this up with our pickled onion. I'm just gonna place a few right on top. So gorgeous. And then add a little of our feta cheese. And this is gonna be a hit, y'all. This is ready to serve. If you've ever been to basically any party or barbecue, you know you gotta have a good punch and this one is great. So I've got some water here that's boiling and we're gonna use this to create a simple syrup for this recipe. And simple syrups are usually just water and sugar and then you can add in whatever you want so you can really sort of bring in some additional flavor and that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm adding in our sugar 
to our water and we're gonna get that to boiling temperature. And then I'm gonna add in some berries, some strawberries, some raspberries, and then finally, because rhubarb is in season right now, I'm going to add some rhubarb. I love to work it in drinks like this, and it sort of brings down that sweetness of those berries, and it's just so delicious. And finally, I'm gonna add in some mint. I'm just gonna stir all of this to combine, and then I'm going to let this come to boiling so I can really let that sugar and all of this sort of dissolve and thicken up. Once it starts to boil, you can see that color developing, that bright red color that is just gonna make that punch just pop, okay, on that barbecue table. It's gonna be so beautiful. This has been going for about 20 minutes and it's perfectly thickened and that syrup is like delicious. And we wanted to make sure that all that sugar dissolved. So now that it's cooled down a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and strain it. This is our berry rhubarb syrup and we're ready to assemble our punch. I'm gonna take my syrup here and add this right into my pitcher. I've also got some ginger ale. And I've got a little vodka here too. Gotta have a little fun. This is mama's drink right here. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna add in some berries as well. This is gonna be just like a nice garnish. And then do a nice little stir here to combine everything. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Pour a little into this glass. You can see that gorgeous color. Those berries fly in. Look how beautiful this is. I cannot wait to serve this to our guests. And I'm actually gonna take some of this same punch and I'm gonna turn them into popsicles. Who doesn't love a popsicle during the summer? So I know they're gonna absolutely fall in love with this whole idea. I've showed you how to make most of our menu items and I've got a few more tricks up my sleeve. I'm gonna be serving a peach salad and also a family favorite potato salad. It's almost party time, guys. Next, when we come back, we are heading out to the grill. It's the day of the barbecue, y'all. I am so excited. It's a beautiful sunny day and I cannot wait for my guests to see the spread. My first two guests are Mercedes and Kelly. I work with both of these ladies and they are like sisters to me, so I had to invite them to my barbecue. My next two guests are Lola and Amy. Lola was my college roommate, and Amy, she's a newer friend I met through blogging. Chanel, we met each other working together ages ago, and Ariana, she's my sorority sister. <laughs> my last guest, well, you can't have a barbecue without inviting your mama, okay? So she definitely had to come. Mom, so good to see you.
I'm ready to eat. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Let's make our way to the table. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. This is my watermelon salad that's in my cookbook, Everyday Grand. Enjoy. I love it. This is the main Woo! event. Simple ribs, even though they don't take a lot of effort, they taste amazing, y'all. You will love them. All right, ladies, cheers. 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 Yeah. Enjoy, dig in. So, what do you guys think of the potato salad? Well, so this is really good. Really good. Mm. Delicious. Yeah. Look. Mama approves, that's it. If I say it's good, it's good. Let me tell you how long we worked on that recipe. Oh, there is a story with that, okay? We tested it over and over and over, I think maybe at least 20 times. At least. Oh, and my mom and dad, they were like, nope, needs this. Nope, needs more of this. See, before it went into the book, they were still nervous about it. I was right, like, it's going into the book. Yeah. Right. But it's Regardless. been a hit. Everyone has loved it. Great. Like, you did your thing, Josh. Yeah. Okay, it's time for some games. Okay, this first one we're gonna play, it's called Celebrity in a Bag. Yeah. You got all these little names in here, and these are different celebrities, and you can ask all of us yes or no questions so you can guess who the celebrity is that you have. Oh. 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 Is it a girl? Yes. yes. Okay, is it an actor? Yes. yes. Does she have a Grammy? Yes. Yes. yes, and he got Emmy, Grammy, have, oh, Oscar, oh, Tony. Tony. Oh, cool, I did not know that, <laughs> is what that meant. Is it Jennifer Hudson? Yes! Yeah. 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 All right, guys, we've got popsicles. Yeah. We've got a berry rhubarb, a peach sweet tea, and pink lemonade. Delicious. Cheers. I cannot thank you enough for coming and enjoying my good food yeah. and enjoying the company. It ain't over yet, because we are going to get on the dance floor. <laughs> Let's bust the move. Oh, yeah. Okay.
Feeling inspired to throw your own summer barbecue? Scan the QR code for my recipes, featured products, and more. Just so you know, today may get a commission for purchases made through the QR code or links on our website. so close we can almost taste it and that is why we've brought in barbecue master and owner of pig beach restaurants both in brooklyn and queens matt abadu and congratulations thank so, you very much let's talk about the cookbook because finally yes the book is, the uh, book is here barbecue cookbook that's right exciting uh, I, when i think of barbecue i really do think of uncle al uh because we, well, no we exchange better, right? barbecue that's right ideas and tips all the time didn't you write a blurb in matt's book i did he sure did i did what do you love I about the cookbook uh it's it's simple you know, everything is is really accessible. Mm -hmm. You can imagine making this stuff. Exactly, and that's what we really wanted to do. We wanted to make a book that everybody could enjoy, that everybody could cook from the barbecue, like hobbyist to the professional barbecue guy, learning to make some extra right. flavors, some, something fun and different. What advice do you have for people who, who want it, like newbies in the barbecue world? What's, uh, what's your advice? I think advice? the best advice I can give any, any newbie in the barbecue world is to get yourself a digital insta read thermometer. It's probably one of the best ways you can tell when anything is cooked, ready to be wrapped, or ready to be finished. So with that tool, you can really have a lot of success in the barbecue game. Perfect. I teased this segment by saying you were going to find some meats that are a little less expensive to use. Yep. What do we got today? So today we got a little tri-tip action for you. It's a cut of sirloin from the bottom part of the sirloin. And what I love about tri-tip is it's got so much incredible flavor to it. And it's got a mm. texture of that something similar to like a flank steak or so once you slice it nice and thin. All right. And grill up. It also takes on great flavor. So what do you start our, with here? Our tri-tip recipe is super simple. We're starting off with a piece of tri-tip that you can see here called tri-tip because it looks like a triangle. It's got mm -hmm. like a triangular sort of shape to it. But for our, our rub, we're going to do something super simple. Some ground black pepper, some paprika, granulated garlic, and a little bit of dried rosemary. Now we're going to mix this all together, and this can go in your pantry into a like, food safe container. Save it up there for probably up to six months in your pantry and use it when needed. Can this you use that same season. rub on other cuts of Absolutely. meat? Absolutely. You can use it on any kind of steak, chicken, poultry, uh, pork. It's delicious. It's just mm -hmm. a really simple all-purpose all rub. So then we're going to take our tri-tip. We're going to hit it with a little bit of olive oil, whatever you have in your pantry, and then we're going to generously season it with this tri-tip rub or really all-purpose kind of rub seasoning. On both sides, right? Yeah. On both sides. That's right. Oh, both sides. See, look, I love Savannah it. Savannah knows that. She's, She's, got, got, a got, got, a She's got a cooking oh, show. That's yeah. right. Are right, you so going to eat both sides? So from Season here, if you sides. have a smoker, this is the point where we're going to fire up our smoker to 250 degrees. I like to use cherry wood, but whatever kind of wood and whatever that sort of smoke flavor you like, by all means, have some fun with it. And do you have to smoke it? Can you you don't. That's the great thing about the steak is you don't have to smoke it at all if you don't want mm -hmm. to. It just adds that element of like that barbecue smoky flair and flavor to it, which really kind of makes that steak different and shine a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But you could also just take it and cook it completely on the grill if you want. And you would do that at 252? There's a slow... Uh, no, on the grill. So whenever we set up a grill, I love to do what's called uh, zone cooking, where I'll have one side set to really hot, mm -hmm. hot heat for charring and marking, and then another side set to sort of medium. To cook so that, that center. To, exactly, to get that nice and low center cook so you get a perfect eye. What do you want so, to do it inside, Matt? If you wanted to do it inside, you could absolutely take it and just roast it off in your oven. No problem. Like, that's the great thing about cooking is that everyone has a version of a recipe of what they can do, but the great thing is is that as long as you're cooking it in that digital instant read thermometer you have, well, you're cooking it yeah. to the right temperature, you're going to have a delicious cut of meat mm -hmm. per, cooked what's this? What's time. this medium rare? What do you pull this at? So for medium, medium, I, no, for medium rare, I'll pull it around 135 and no, let it sort of rest. It's, exactly, it's going to carry you over. That's cook. why that, that, all right, we got about a minute and a half. All right, right so, so we're going to go quick. So in here we have our steak. It's been smoked to about 100 degrees. We're going to let it rest. Then we're going to mark it off on that grill, get those beautiful char marks that are happening. And then for me, the perfect condiment to the oh summertime God, meat so is a chimichurri sauce. I love chimichurri. Literally love translating love chimichurri. it to the hodgepodge. Oh, and skirt a lot. Oh, yeah, it's the best. So we're just going to take some parsley and chop it up. We're going to add it to our mixing bowl. We have some mint, some more parsley. I add cilantro with that, too, sometimes. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Cilantro is great to it as well. We can add some uh, shallots, garlic, chili flake, oregano. Put that all in the bowl. Red wine vinegar, lemon juice, olive oil. We'll mix that all together. Zest it with a little bit of lemon, and, and you have so a perfect, good, fresh perfect. Oh my God, it's the best thing ever. And, and then, then we're the just slicing. gonna take the steak. And what I love about tri-tip is good. that mm -hmm. the Didn't backside, that. for those of the people that would like the steak enough. a little bit so more cooked, just, go just go by the nature plate. of the steak. That's my board right there. That's a happy plate. Love it. That is a happy plate. What's going on here at home? That's fantastic. You're not eating? So the great thing, the great thing about tri-tip is that since it's tapered off at the end, for the guests that are joining us and want their steak cooked a little bit more, they can. Have those sort of medium well pieces, and the people that want something a little bit more oh, on the medium rare side, you go right to the middle and you get those beautiful pieces cut right there. Mm. Top mm -hmm. it off with that bright, fresh, vibrant cheese. It's 
it's it's just amazing. delicious. Steak, it's perfect. You can right? do it too. It's chimichurri and chicken too. It is fatty. Yep. It's got a great, but it, clean, but it's, yeah, it's, meaty flavor to it. That chimichurri, just get it cracked. I love it. I love it. And this morning, we're focusing on the best grilling tips and tricks for that first cookout of the season. That's right. Who better to help us out than a fourth generation butcher, cookbook author, and founder of Seymour Meats and Veggies, Cara Nicoletti. Cara. Good morning. It's great to see you. But you have to explain, you're a fourth generation butcher, but it sounds like you're trying to get us to eat less meat. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I am. So, I mean, we see that meat prices are really, really high right now. So I feel like the name of the game this summer is eating better meat and just eating a little bit less of it. Okay. Um, so my sausages are combining meat and vegetables. And I'm also going to teach you a little bit about how to treat your vegetables like meat um, for a really satisfying grilling season. Mm -hmm. So is that your secret tip is, you know, still get a fulfilling <laughs> barbecue out there, but, you know, just kind of work in a lot more vegetables? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, if you buy better quality meat, if you're buying grass-fed beef and pasture-raised pork and that kind of stuff, the flavor is going to be so much better. Uh, and what that means is that you can really eat a little bit less of it and still be just as satisfied. So um, these sausages that we're cooking today are all humanely raised meat and about 50% less meat. Um, they're filled with fresh vegetables. And then we'll supplement... Uh, a bunch of different vegetables alongside them to really have a nice, satisfying meal. Dietitians everywhere are like cheering for you right yeah, now. Yeah, really. So, <laughs> what, what do you have by the side? What, what are you going to make, Cara? So over here, we've got a bunch of different vegetables that I really love to grill, um, sort of like heartier vegetables. So we've got zucchini, we've got some portobello mushrooms. I really love to grill radicchio. It makes it really nice and sweet. Um, some cauliflower, some eggplant. And I've made a rub here, which is a mixture of brown sugar and smoked paprika, some coriander, some garlic and onion powder. And so what I love to do is sort of make some slits on something like a mushroom or a zucchini. And you're gonna rub it in olive oil and then you're gonna sprinkle it in this, this rub, just like you would oh, a piece of meat. Yeah. Uh, and it's gonna mm. kind of give you, yeah, a similar, a similar feel. So, um, you know, I think it's just a great way to trick your mind into thinking you're eating meat. Look so this is really like taste. a steak rub. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna it does. Yeah. Um, so when you're, so really, I'm going to be doing charcoal grilling today. That's generally what I prefer. I like the flavor better. Um, I think that it can be a little bit intimidating because it's a little bit harder to control. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips on that just to make it a little bit more seamless. Um, the first thing is that I really love to use a chimney lighter when I'm using a charcoal grill instead of just putting the coals in and sort of squirting lighter fluid on it. <laughs> um, you put paper at the bottom, you pile the coals on top about 20, 25 minutes beforehand, and you let the charcoal get nice and ashy and gray before you dump it in here. You just dump it in. Um, and what that's gonna do is, it's gonna give you that really nice smoky flavor and you're not gonna get any of that lighter fluid flavor. Mm -hmm. um, so you wanna make sure that your grill is nice and hot before you put your meat on it. Um, this way it's not soaking in any charcoal flavors and it's really just getting that nice fire flavor. How do you and control the temperature? there's a pterodactyl flying <laughs> in your backyard. I know, <laughs> something's <laughs> happening. That was the biggest um, bird sound I've ever um, heard in my <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> it might take one of those veggie um, sausages say, right off your grill. I'd be careful, Cara. Please. To help yourself. <laughs> um, so I would say also it can be a little bit harder to control your heat levels mm. on a charcoal grill. Um, but so that is what the vents on your grill are for. On this one, we've got a couple here on the lid and we've got a couple here on the bottom. When, you're, when your grates are fully opened, your heat is going to be the highest. Mm. Um, and if you want to kind of lower the heat a little bit, you close these grates, you're cutting off Ooh. the oxygen and you're kind of Lesser, lessening the heat. Um, but also, piling your coals into sort of different zones is really helpful. Um, I think a lot of people think about grilling as this like really hot and fast thing. You're taking a steak, you're grilling it really hot and fast. Uh, but, if you're, but if you want to grill other things like vegetables, sort of more delicate cut like chicken um, and sausages, yeah. you want to go for a more medium, medium low heat. Yeah. Um, yep. And so you, you can achieve that by sort of making different zones on your grill. Zone, so here cool we have, 
the coals, yeah, cooler zone, and that's going to help you with flare-ups too. Um, if you have right. oil on something and it flares up, yeah. Car, thank instead you. of spritzing it and getting ash all over your food, you can kind of move it yeah, over move to it the over. Car, you're awesome. And these are good tips too, because people are about to go nuts this weekend yeah. grilling. So thank you for that. Appreciate we'll it. More all those veggies look great. We're back now with Today Food. This morning, we're turning your grill into a meat smoker. Here with us, a guy who knows a lot about all of that, certainly grilling, the great chef Michael Simon. He travels the country, and his Food Network show, it premiered last night. It's great. It's called Barbecue USA, giving us a behind-the-scenes look at the toughest barbecue competitions. Michael, I mean, you already know so much. You visit these pit masters in all these great places, all the meats that you're eating. Give us one good tip for people to take away for grilling this summer that you learned. You know, patience. I think the greatest tip is patience. Also, like a lot of times when people put things on the grill, they want to see giant plumes of smoke. You want to, your smoke, you want it to kind of run clear. Then you get that gentle smoke flavor that really makes the food delicious. So I'm showing you guys an Alabama chicken today, Alabama style chicken. Yep. But you could do it on a, on a grill. You could do it on a Weber. How do you smoke a on grill. a grill? So you're doing offset heat. So all of our heat is over here, Carson. Okay, indirect. Indirect. You could put wood chips on there, uh, chunks or chips, start it with coals, and then you just drop the heat down you want to monitor your heat chicken you can be between 275 and 325 I just season it with olive oil salt pepper on the smoke is where all the great flavor and you can do this come. without the wood chips too if you don't want absolutely to do you could just like just just charcoal gives you incredible flavor and a lot of styles of barbecue only use charcoal right. but I use fruit woods apple cherry because they're a little bit more mild and they don't overpower the meat especially something light like chicken all right you got a beautiful sauce you can put the Alabama chicken so this started Alabama white sauce is like this really historic uh, sauce that you put on chicken. People that like ranch, this is like, I feel where ranch started, somewhere in Alabama. Okay. You know, Big Bob Gibson's very famous barbecue place there started the sauce. So they don't always put horseradish in, sometimes they do, but mayo, horseradish, lemon juice, oh, I love it. cider, a little bit of cayenne for some heat, yep. salt, and a touch of sugar. Mm -hmm. Come here. And then you just whisk this together till it's smooth. Now, you could you could kind of have fun with it. You could put some buttermilk in it if you want. You could thin it out thicken it if up, you thin want. It out, do anything. And then this, yeah, here's one that we smoked just like that. Wow. And then you just chop it up. You run it through. And the sauce it tastes has like a little gravy. heat. Right? It's but like it, a gravy. Yeah, but it's got a little heat, a little Oh, it's acidity. delicious. It's got all the good stuff. So if you How go to Alabama and get smoked chicken, this is what's happening. Can you break this chicken down really fast? How do you break it down? You so, go right down yeah. the center? Like, so this one, see, We're it's just having a barbecue. So, yeah, I just go straight down. You're breaking through, through some stuff, right? And you split it first. And yeah. then after you split it, you go through the legs and the thighs down. OK. And there's a joint in there. You find the ball Boom. joint cut in between three, those two. Yep. And then I like to split my breasts in half. And we serve one, two, it on. Three, four, so you get about eight pieces, pieces out of that. Great. Yeah. All right, let's move on down. All right, moving on. Yes. Yes. We're going to use wood chips. 
Are you going to soak them first? So, Ed, yeah, that's a good question. If you soak them, oh my God, it so throws good. a little bigger smoke. So if you want more gently smoked, I wouldn't recommend smoking them, soaking them first, even though they're going to burn quickly. Okay. Or you could even go to a larger chunk and just let it go. But water creates smoke, which kind of sometimes will make the barbecue a little acrid. Okay. Yeah. We're overlooking this chicken, the Alabama the, the, the chicken with that amazing. sauce. Yeah. That how, is special. Yeah, how is it chicken so moist? Yeah, yeah, how is it so juicy? Huh? The, the slow chicken, cook. Like, the chicken, the moisture. We're good. Cars yeah. good. I were all, we're <laughs> done this before. It's all overcooked. I drink a beer, Michael. In there, barbecue's everything. <laughs> You're good. 160. I sure. put that sauce Don't on. Slow and low. Yeah. What is on here? So this potatoes? is just a quick potato sale. So what we did is we took these potatoes, we put them in foil right on You didn't boil grill. them first or anything? You just yeah, so in oil, salt, um, you can put in a little bit of pepper, some water, and Wait, a splash. Wait, you did pre-cook them or no? Pardon? They're raw? or These are raw. Yeah, okay. And, but they're gonna steam a little bit and char in our foil packet. And you let them go until they're tender. We put these on the grill. And you can put these on right when you're doing your chicken. I mean, we have two grills going now. You could do this in one grill. You take these off and we're gonna toss them into a very simple dressing. So here, watch. Yep. Here, you start dumping stuff in, I'll start dumping it. We have okay. olive oil, we have sherry vinegar. We can do it in here. Oh, watch. shoot, yep. I'm gonna show you a trick. All right. We can do it, don't worry. Mustard, I use grainy if you have it. We have a little bit of fresh dill and parsley, salt, and then if we dump our sherry vinegar in here. Why, sherry vinegar is hard to find. Yeah. Did you ever notice that? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I it is hard to find. It is not. <laughs> well, I can't find it. Just put well, it that way. You could use a white vinegar, champagne I, I, vinegar, that's what I red use. wine white vinegar. vinegar. Yeah. Rice is a little too gentle, but you just shake it up. Oh, now yeah. you have dressing. Ooh. Oh, I love that's it. That's just a little Gucci on top of the, yeah, yeah. the, yeah, the a, a, a ghetto. Ta like, that just elevates that regular yeah, old potato you know what I do? into something I throw so special. That white sauce on those potatoes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, good. yeah if you want it a little bit more creamy, you could do that. This is a little bit more acidic and poppy, yeah. um, like almost like German potato salad, uh -huh. a touch. Yeah. Um, and then you have a really bright really potato <laughs> salad. I mean, it's really easy. Like cooking. Why is that white on? sauce everywhere? It's I know. And that's, it's a okay. that's a regional thing, maybe. It, well, no, it, yeah, it's purely Alabama. Wow. You know, it is a white based sauce. You don't see like when people think of barbecue, they think of red sauce, but white sauce. There's a million verse. Hey, Michael, man. you want to say hi to Cleveland? Congrats on the show. Oh, yeah. you oh, Cleveland, watching. we love you. Tune in, Today. baby. Come on, food. Let's go get in. the recipes. Oh, and check out Michael's show, Barbecue USA, on the Food Network and streaming on Discovery Plus. with a side of corn on the cob. And here to help us is Antimo DeMeo and Scott Stein, co-owners of James Beard-nominated Bardea Food and Drink in Wilmington, Delaware. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
We wish you were here with us because it's like we could <laughs> taste the steak and smell the corn through the screen. But grilling the perfect steak can always be a challenge. But you say that this is really simple. You have to start before you even put it on the grill, right? Correct. Yes, it's definitely uh, easy to make at home dish. Uh, we kind of simplified it, but it's uh, something that's very approachable. Uh, and we're super excited to show you what we, uh, what we got cooking here. All right, All right. So what do you start with? Does it need much seasoning? Yeah, so actually what we like to do with our steaks, obviously product is everything, so we like to do, use prime grass-fed beef, okay, with great intramuscular fat, okay? So what we're going to start doing here is we're going to get this strip steak, okay, and we're going to use the fat cap, and we're going to put it right in the cast iron. Mm. We've had that preheating a little bit, we're going to get that sizzling a little bit, and we're going to get some of that fat right now. We're going to add a little bit of oil to the pan. So a big step that we like to do at the restaurant is we really believe in brining our meats, so what that does, it uh, might sound all fancy, but it's simply adding it into a liquid with some salt and maybe sugar. Uh, and depending on how much time, you can let the meat sit in that overnight. Or we like to do a minimum of three hours. And what that does is it gives you a perfectly seasoned meat. And essentially, the meat is more moist, more tender, and more flavor. So you can even add herbs, aromatics, things like that. So it's something that we love to do uh, at the restaurant. Uh, the reason that we love this recipe so much is, you know, Scott and I are always working. We're always at the restaurant. Uh, so on Sunday, Monday, it's like family day. And this is a perfect thing to do on Sundays. Uh, we Obviously, you can start it with the steak and the corn and eat that as your entree. And then we can repurpose it later in the week, like we're going to show you here for salad. Yeah, you know, we see that beautiful steak in front of Scott right there. And this can be kind of a controversial thing with steak lovers. What do you guys do afterwards when it's done? Okay, so very, very big step is the <laughs> resting period. Okay, so that's why we actually have this steak for you guys right here. So we're going to render and sear a steak here, but you want it to rest for a minimum of five, ten minutes. It allows all the juices to kind of soak into the meat. All right, and it allows that flavor to really set. Okay, so you really get that full, true meat experience. If you cut it too soon, uh, you're going to lose a lot of that juice and a lot of that flavor. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge corn lover. Let's move on to the corn. What is your secret sauce here? So for the corn, uh, we like to, we obviously have it out of the husk. We like to cook it in the husk uh, on the grill so it kind of self steams and makes it a little bit sweeter. But when it comes to corn, you just want really good quality corn, uh, especially when it's in season. They're pretty delicious on their own. I you don't really corn. need to do too much to it. Uh, a classic seasoning that we like using is ex virgin olive oil, a little bit of chili uh, and lime. You know, very, mm. very simple, straightforward. And it allows us to repurpose it in salad very well simply because of the seasoning that we use. Oh, a little uh, chili. That must make so, it a little, mm -hmm. little kick. And you've Correct. Got this a little bit of sweet, a little spice, a little bit of acid. It's Correct. a good combination. So we've got the corn, we've got the steak. You're going to turn this into an amazing summer salad. Correct. All right. You want to show them, cut down this yep. steak? I'm going to take this out here. So I'm going to show you guys. So we are, right now, the strip steak, right? We rendered out the fat. Okay, so now for what we like to use is a peppercorn blend. Uh, you got it's simple to find at the grocery store. So here we have a house blend. It's a little bit of tele cherry, pink, white, and green peppercorns. Okay, so we're going to get it and put it right on that steak. Okay, and that's going to give you that flavor profile, profile the off off peppercorn blend. The very, peppercorn very makes a big difference. Mm. Big, 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 big difference. difference. Without the peppercorn, you're, kinda, you're, you're just kind of eating beef, beef, which is okay, okay but this kind of gives it that extra little kick. All right, we're running out of time here, so let's. How, how do you make a dressing for the salad, and how do you top it off? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so essentially, we, we, are, we, have we have a plastic, plastic lemon vinaigrette, vinaigrette okay. okay, that we use. So that's going to start seasoning that salad. I'm going to start pumping steak. That's going to be amazing. Then you cut up the corn, you put it in, and. We'll put the full yeah. recipe on, um, on today.com, right? Look how great that uh, looks. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So simple. Okay. I love so it. We cut up the steak. Yeah. Yep. Perfectly medium rare. We're going to use a little bit of EDO to season this, a little bit of flaky salt, okay? Touch of lemon juice. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. All right. And then right from there, oh, we, can we get wish the we could dig in. And we put it right on the steak. Yep. Well, that there looks amazing. And next time, you, we hope you're in studio with us. <laughs> and we will put the full oh, recipe absolutely. on today.com. <laughs> Thanks so much, Antimo and Scott. And for these recipes, yeah. again, head to, head to today.com slash food. Mm, I'd oh, love to get that right now.
Welcome back this morning on Today Food. We're getting you ready for your grilling season. That's right. A lot of people like me are going to be firing up the grill over the holiday weekend. So we called in an expert to share her list of the best grills on the market. Mm. That's right. Elizabeth Carmel is the author of Steak and Cake, but you <laughs> might know her best as the original grill girl. Oh, Elizabeth, you are fired up. Your grill Pumped. is fired Let's up. Go. Before we get into the ins and outs, what should you really be looking for when you're thinking about buying a grill? I'm so glad you asked me. There, it's very simple. There are three things that you need to think about. Number one, what kind of grill are you going to buy? There are three choices. There's charcoal, there's gas, and there's pellet grill. The next thing is think about your lifestyle. Are you someone who likes to build a fire and tend it, or are you someone who really just wants to flip a switch? And then finally, the thing that I tell everybody is, you need to buy the biggest and the best grill that you can afford because the more you use it, the better griller you're going to become and you're going to want to use it all year round. Yeah. Elizabeth, is, are some of those grills better for certain kinds of foods? Like if you were just going to buy one and you were going to recommend one, which kind would you like? You know what? That's a, that's a great question. Once again, it goes to lifestyle. If you like the hands-on effect of it, you want a charcoal grill. And you know what? Charcoal grills used to be the same old Weber kettle mm -hmm. that we all know, which is a wonderful classic. But now I'm sitting here with the Spark Grill, and it's a really innovative charcoal grill. I mean, who knew the charcoal grill needed a makeover? Not me, but Spark did. <laughs> well, look at that. And there's so many things to love about it, but the biggest thing is they've taken the hassle out of charcoal grilling. You no longer have to wrestle with a big bag of charcoal. Wow. Instead, all you use is this really sleek, compressed charcoal wow. brick, hmm. and you just slide it in the grill, yeah. turn on a button, and it's on. They've really taken all the hassle out of it. But wow. that's not all. The other thing is you've got bricks that go from 250 degrees all the way up to 900 degrees. And before you ask me, why do I need 900 degrees, I'll tell you because they sell a pizza pack and you can oh. actually retrofit this charcoal oh. grill and make it into a Neapolitan style pizza oven, which you know is all the rage this summer. Awesome. So you're really getting two for one, mm. charcoal and, pizza, what, and, and yeah. a pizza oven. What's something like that run, a ballpark cost? So I'm having a little bit of trouble mm -hmm. hearing you. Oh. So I'm gonna go right to gas grill. <laughs> okay. You right. might ask yourself, Perfect. $8, why do you want? Answer. Why do people love gas so much? And you know what? It's easy to light, it's easy to use, and there's virtually no cleanup. And it comes in every kind of size. It comes in something as small as this Weber Go Anywhere grill, which is perfect for tailgates or for small spaces. And it will even fit into a tote bag. It's great. You just use a one-pound LP tank. And um, it's really terrific for a balcony, for the beach this summer. I just heard your report on beaches. That's mm -hmm. really amazing. And then the third choice didn't even used to be a choice, it, but it is now. And pellet grills are all the rage. And you know what? This is what they use, compressed wood pellets for the mm. fuel. And then there's a fan that controls the heat. I'm standing right here in front of this um, Traeger Ironwood 650, wow, which okay. I love. You can now mm. make authentic barbecue in your own backyard mm. or even on a balcony. And it's, it's really terrific. There's so many bells and whistles on this grill that really elevate your cook. But the thing that I like the most is the super smoke feature. And the reason that that's important is that wood smoke is what gives your barbecue that great flavor yeah. or really anything that you're cooking, right? And the pellets come in all different kinds of wood. But sometimes when you're cooking brisket and ribs mm -hmm. and pulled pork yeah. and chicken, mm -hmm. you just want a little extra smoke. Wow. And yeah. this gives you an extra bu burst of smoke, which is an extra burst yeah. of flavor.
We've got you covered this morning. This is grilling expert chef David Rose. He's here with two easy to make dishes. David, we're going to be spending a lot of time together today. Yes, morning, noon, night, maybe midnight. I don't know, Gray, we're going to serve. You're doing the, the 4th of July fireworks yes. dinner at the Macy's show. Folks who tune in for that tonight, what can they expect? They can expect delicious barbecue, okay. fun, excitement, music. Yes. Me. Yes. These arms. Yes. Craig now. Those are some serious I'm saying. arms. <laughs> so let's, a lot going on. Let's get started here. So what, yes. what's our first recipe? All right. So first recipe, what we have here, we're going to do some barbecue meatballs. So a lot of times after your barbecue, you have a lot of extra ground yes. beef or last minute items. So we're doing some barbecue meatballs. Barbecue meatballs. So first things right. first, barbecue sauce, of course. Mm. So you want to have some molasses for a little bit of sweet. I'm gonna have you add that apple cider right. vinegar oh. in there, Greg. Wow. Because you want to have acid, you know? Molasses. You want something to cut through that fattiness. All okay, right. next, you want to add our spices. I see some brown sugar. Yes, sir. Brown I see sugar. some smoked paprika. Yep. Yep. I see some garlic powder. Yep. Salt, pepper. Mm. And what? cayenne for that heat, brother. Yeah. Gotta have that heat. Cayenne. Sweet heat, baby. Heat, All right. sweet. I love it. There you go. So you whisk that up right there. Right. You bring it up to a boil. Okay. Then you bring it up to a simmer. Let it this relax. This sauce is really good. As it comes good. to room temperature. That sauce is fire, right? Oh that, that sauce yes, is fire. Amazing. All right, now to the ground beef. You want to season your meat. At my barbecue, at your barbecue, yeah. we do flavor. Yes, we no do. No bland. No bland. No bland. No. All right, so what's that right there, Craig? What do we got? A garlic powder. Garlic powder. Salt. Boom. Salt. Pepper. Boom. I see more cayenne. Paprika. Smoked paprika. Ooh. Paprika or paprika, depending on where you're from. <laughs> okay. So you mix that all together, and then you stir that mm. like this. With like your beef, what do you bam. use? What's, yeah. what's your beef secret? Right there, essentially, you know, with more so than the blend, you want to okay. use the uh, the percentage. So a lot of times oh, 80 wow. 20 yeah. or 70 30, that's beef to so fat good. ratio because you want fat for that juiciness yes, we do. and mouthfeel. Mm. No dry burgers. So this right. is going in the cast yes, iron. Yes, cast iron burgers. right there. We use the ice cream scoop for uniform size. Oh, you get that nice sizzle on there. You get that brown, oh left, goodness. right, top, bottom. When they're done, come on down come on here, Craig. Come on down here. Here we go. Dylan, right there. Dylan, it looks like it's yummy. Brown is flavor. <laughs> brown is flavor. When you see right there, you can eat that right there. It's as really good, is, Craig. Ooh, but you know what? Wow. We're making barbecue meatball, so we add that sauce. That's and you put it back oh. in the oven. Back in there. Bam. Back in there. Oh, it's grilling time. So if you want to throw it on the grill, okay. we can do that too. That's sauce. So it's nice and lacquered and sticky. Aren't those meatballs the bomb? So ridiculous. Good. Well there ridiculous. we go, baby. Y'all only have like a minute left. Going, Craig. And you use them Watch on that the... tie. Watch that tie, oh, brother. I got you. I got you. I Watch that tie. Dig it. Dig it. Appreciate that. What we think? He's got a fireworks show to host. Not bad. Not, Not bad. bad. Oh, that again, bro. We pound it or hop? There we go. We pound it. All right. So that's right there. This is really good. Isn't that good? Appreciate that's how I think coming from you, man. Thank you. All right, let's move on down the line. We're gonna again repurpose the cheeseburger dip. Yes, the cheeseburger dip right here, baby. A lot of times, you know, you have cheeseburgers. <laughs> What's so a barbecue good. without cheeseburgers, right? Not yeah. a barbecue. It's not a barbecue, you know? All right. So what I did, I browned off some ground meat, uh, and I put some caramelized onions in there. I some onions, it. yellow onions, okay. so they're nice and caramelized. And then I take them out. I add them to a little bit of room temperature cream cheese. Oh, that cream wow. cheese is going to give it flavor. Yeah. You know? All right, so we add that in there. Room temperature is a must oh because gosh. you want it to be malleable and form into a dip. A little bit of heavy cream. Heavy cream. Oh, give it some viscosity. So got about and then cheese, baby. Let's do it. Cheese. This cheese. is so good. Oh, Cheddar. Mozzarella. Yes. Mozzarella. Yes. Brown beef. There's a oh, brown beef. Mix, mix, mix. Okay. We put that into a cast iron oh, my gosh. right there. Nice and sizzly and bubbly. What we want to do first is more ground beef on top. Oh, More that cheese on layers. top. Oh, my God. Layers, baby. We layering. I love So this. it's nice and brown and brulee. This is amazing. And add some lettuce, some tomatoes, a oh. little bit of that special sauce. I can't tell you. <laughs> that right there. Boys and girls. Last minute I barbecue. Know, I don't know why I'm pairing this with water. <laughs> we need a beer. We need a beer. Yeah. Last time I was here, I offered <laughs> you a beer when you were pregnant. Uh, but you're good now. We ready now, baby. <laughs> we ready now. We ready now. David, thank you. This morning. It's a matchup of the taste buds. The LA cheeseburger slider versus the San Francisco pizza pull of art sourdough. Everyone over the test tasting table is so happy. We've got Laura Vitale, cookbook author and host of the hit show on YouTube, Laura in the Kitchen. Hi, Laura, welcome. Hi, thank you. Okay, so let's do sliders first. Yes. So a little ground are, beef. These are fantastic and so, so easy, especially in the colder months when you don't want to light your outdoor yeah. grill to make sliders. Yeah. You're going to take some ground beef, although you could use chicken, you could use turkey, yeah. you could use any ground beef that you like. Mm -hmm. You're going to brown that. Browning. Once that browns, it becomes just delicious. You're going to add some garlic, some okay. onion, some steak seasoning, and you're going to go ahead and cook that just until the onion is nice and translucent. Okay. And then one of the key tips for me okay. is to add 
a little bit of cream cheese because what that does oh. is it acts oh. like edible glue in a way and it keeps your ground beef from flying up all over the place. Then you're going to take some Hawaiian rolls, really any soft roll that oh, you Oh, I love like. the Hawaiian roll though, Hawaiian so it's a lish. Roll. It's like a donut. Especially mm -hmm. the yes. slider size. You're going to go ahead and okay. cut them horizontally in half. Okay. You're going to add your ground beef, top it with the cheese of your choice. Okay. I'm just a fan of American cheese with my burger. Sh you should I be putting it right on the meat? Yes. Okay. You can tear it up if you want to. It makes it go a lot further. Oh, okay, yeah. And then you're going to make a topping, which consists of some butter, Worcestershire sauce, some Italian seasoning, mm -hmm. and fresh garlic. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go ahead and brush the entire top mm -hmm. of oh, your yeah. sliders oh. with this. Oh, with your sauce, okay. Yes. Just then, the top, okay, not the bottom. Put it on a baking sheet, cover with foil in the oven 15 yes. minutes, remove and the foil so 15 good. minutes. Friends, what do we say? Oh, my Insane. goodness. Isn't it so it's good? So do you good. taste that cream cheesy taste? I want to try this. Mm. Try that. And the, the pickle. pickle with it. Sweet and then pickle. you can take like a small piece of pickle. Oh, my and God. Isn't that amazing? So good, yeah. right? That's incredible. Mm. They're so much better than outdoor sliders on a mm. grill. I'm going to say that. This is the best thing I've ever tasted. I'm telling you. Oh so, now we're going to move on to one of my favorite things, which is like a giant garlic bread that mm -hmm. tastes like pizza, and it's phenomenal. You're going to take a sourdough bowl or really any yeah. giant rustic loaf of bread, and you're going to cut it about two-thirds of the way down mm -hmm. um, in both directions, okay? You're okay. going to cut it like so, and then you're going to stuff it. You're going to stuff it with some pepperoni and mozzarella, but before you do that, you're going to make a garlic oil, which is olive oil, garlic, Italian seasoning, mm -hmm. a pinch of hot pepper flakes, and you're going to brush this mixture, mm -hmm. or I actually think using a, a spoon to sort of pour it oh, in. Oh, yeah, sort of pouring it in. It's mm -hmm. so much easier, okay. and then so, once that's brushed So pour it ready, in, but you want to brush the outside, too. Yes. Okay. Once that's ready, you're going to go ahead and take pieces of mozzarella. I tear. I'm a tear. Because yeah, tear. I think it's better that way. And you're going to stuff it. Literally, literally stuff your stuff mozzarella. Stuff it in there. And stuff that's your pepperoni it. all over. Okay. Add some freshly grated parmigiano. Bake it covered 15 minutes. Uncovered another 15, 20 minutes. And then when it comes out, it is literally a giant oh, piece oh. of Pizza, mm. garlic bread. That is so so yumminess. What do we think? Every bite's a little bit different. Let's yeah. this one. I Every so bite's a you, little bit different. You have to weigh in. Slider versus pepperoni pull Ooh. apart bread. What do, do it? Can we? What do we say? This is pretty I'm amazing. Gonna go for, I'm going for the pepperoni pull apart. Wow. Really? What, one I'm slider, one pepperoni. Tie-breaking mm. vote. Ah! It's so good. I'm gonna go with the slider with the pickle. Oh. Yes. Okay, wow. Yeah. That's how you know it's good. It's got a must. so yummy. Okay. It's a must. Well, Laura, these are awesome recipes. Mm, People should good. try these. I, I swear that's the best slider I ever mm -hmm. tasted in my whole mm -hmm. life. And it's so easy. And it's so oh, easy. Easy peasy. Oh, okay, you can find these recipes on our website, today.com slash food. <laughs>Got a fun one for you on today food a twist on the traditional july 4th barbecue oh yes and here to help us is erica blair roby she is get this yes an attorney sommelier oh and by the way she's a barbecue pit master that's right and she's from the midwest i'm just kidding her <laughs> grill skills helped her win season two of food network's barbecue brawl and she shares her knowledge on her youtube series it's called the pit stop with blue smoke blair that's fun erica good morning to you good morning, morning y'all we've Thank seen a lot on this show we've done a lot of cooking but i've never seen steaks
like sushi. Oh, well, let's get into All right. it. So how do we start? What kind so of steak the, is this? The first thing you do is you want to get a ribeye. Your ribeye, make it boneless because that's where you're going to be able to have a lot of fun and cut through it. Mm -hmm. We're going to do an equal 50-50 of salt and pepper. You can go pretty heavy with the salt, sides. right? Yeah, because okay. it's going to make that crust for you. Okay. And then you want to heat up your skillet. Mm -hmm. And normally you would do this on a grill, I would think. Oh, right? yeah, you can do this on a grill. You can smoke it. Oh, do whatever you want. You hear that sizzle? Mm -hmm. Just okay. salt, pepper, that's it? Yeah. They call it a Dalmatian rub, just salt pepper. <laughs> okay. That's going to do everything. Okay. You're going to get that to 130 internal temperature. Okay. That's your money shot. Then okay. right here, you're going to rest your steak. Which doesn't take that long to get to that point. Four minutes. Four okay. minutes each side. Right here, you rest your steak for five minutes. Then when you cut it, you want to cut against the grain. So some of the things you want to know is like, the grain is cars waiting at an intersection. Mm -hmm. Cutting against it is building that crosswalk. Okay. So that's how you get those beautiful, tender slices. Okay. And you'll never have a chewy steak again. Okay. Uh, now over here, and I'm gonna get you guys interactive. Sure. We're gonna make our sushi balls. So just whoever wants to, coat your hands with oh, some rice wine vinegar. Take what is that? Oh, the rice wine vinegar? That's all? That's is all that it? That's it. And the secret is. And why are we doing that? It's gonna help you keep the rice from sticking on your hands, but also season it. How do you make oh. sticky rice? Um, you're just a sushi grade rice. It's okay. a short grain, and it's going to have a lot of gelatinous materials in it. And the white rice, oh, this uh, the is, white oh, wine. Oh, right. That does make it, it easier. Right? And this is something you can have everybody in your family mm -hmm. get involved That's in. That's a protein. So you can have an interactive meal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to come right down here. Oh, and now you have your cut slices. Got our cut okay. slice. So now it's time to be an artist and decorate. Mm. So all we're going to do is put it over our sushi ball. And who right. wants to be the artist today and decorate Dylan's the Dylan. artist. Mm -hmm. All right, you got rogered up. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is fun. You have sesame, scallions, a little chili oil. You can add lemon. Ooh, be creative. Chili oil. Mm, Do okay. whatever you like. I love chili oil. Mm, this and is good. This. How, do you eat the, how do you eat this, Erica? What's the secret? Well, you just take it and bite it. You do whatever up. you want. You mm. use your hands, utensils, whatever oh, you like. Pretty, really good, right? There you go. All right, so next we have Carolina Gold Pork Brioche Slider. Okay. Yes, so this is awesome. Now, this is going to be a longer cook. What you have right here is your pork shoulder. Okay. This is where you're going to get your shreds from. We slather it in mustard. That's your binder. It cooks out. So don't be scared that you're going to taste mustard all in it. Yeah. But then you get to be a little barbecue fairy. Mm -hmm. So uh, who wants to do that? A barbecue do that. fairy. Be barbecue now, what are you yourself. using here? Can you tell us? Is this, this is proprietary? A rub. Nope. Mm -hmm. It's just paprika, onion, garlic, cumin, a little mustard powder, and some granulated garlic. Well, you need to rub that in. You got to massage the shoulder. You got to massage right. And how long shoulder. do you do that? So you're going to cook this for about nine hours. <laughs> the first Crack three hours, up. you're just going to spritz it with right. apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. And what that's going to do, that that's going to make it that beautiful mahogany color. Mm. So now, once it's ready, 204 internal temperature is that gold, what yeah. you want. Okay. okay. 204. Now you're going to take your Carolina sauce. Mm. And you've you got a Carolina in there somewhere. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Carolina sauce. And you're just going to mix it in there because you want uniform coating. How do you make your barbecue yeah. sauce? What are you using yours? So I use a tomato base, uh -huh. and then I go in and I use a little apple cider vinegar, and I get creative. Talk slow. Talk what, slow. What else? Whatever you want to put in there, paprika, chilies, the things that made you happy as a kid, mm -hmm. you go for it. Okay. And that's going to be your barbecue sauce. Brown oh, sugar's in there, too. Brown What's sugar, but be coleslaw. careful for that one because it could burn. Oh, okay. Coleslaw okay. is Thank my you. absolute favorite. Right. So there's so many different ones, but I like to have a vinegar-based oh, cake good. for this. Good. Okay, that so complements the. So kind of temper down when you're going to be using, you know, your mayo, mm. and you oh, just wow. want, you actually want the coleslaw to shine through, and it's light. It's yes. not too heavy. Mm. It's not That's at good. all. And then we're using toasted pork brioche buns Gotta because it brings the out the sweetness that's already in the pork. Mm. So you are giving a full. Mm. Ode to pork yeah. right here in this sandwich. Erica, you might be there wasting you your talent in, in that courtroom. <laughs> you might need to do this full time. It's probably stress relief from the courtroom. Thank you, Erica. You guys are welcome. Enjoy your mm, 4th so of July good. weekend. You and too. Back in barbecuers. For these recipes, if you want to make steak sushi at home, you can head to today.com slash food, and we will be right back.
Joy, good morning. Hey, oh my gosh, we went from lobster rolls to ice cream <laughs> s- and now burgers. Oh my gosh. I think this is the most delicious hour ever. <laughs> and it's been relatively healthy. <laughs> yeah, that is true. true. I mean, if you That's think true. about That's it, right. um, especially for these burgers, you're using turkey for the burgers, right? That's right. So this recipe comes together in just about 15, 20 minutes. But I'm telling you guys, it takes like an average burger and elevates it through the stratosphere. When it comes to the lean ground turkey, you can also use lean ground sirloin. Like the bottom line is lean. You want it to be protein packed. And all I'm adding in is uh, this is a tablespoon of fresh minced basil and then one teaspoon of garlic. And that's Mm. it. And I'm just going to mix this up. Was that garlic powder or garlic, fresh garlic? It's garlic powder. I'm trying to make this seamless and simple. And so I'm going to get in there with my hands. You know what I say. They're my most valuable kitchen tool. (laughs) My hands. Just take your rings off. uh, Yes, no rings. (laughs) And I'm going to divide this into four jumbo burgers. So just to save some time, I'll do one. You'll see it comes together very quickly. And I'm going to push this out of the way over here. I have... um, a baking sheet with either wax paper or some parchment, and I'll put it down. Of course, you'll have four burgers here, and all I'm going to now do, whoops, let me get this off. Yikes. Your <laughs> hands are slippery. I'm so now. slippery. I'm I know, so, I know. So I'm going to miss the top, and I like to, it's a little trick with burgers, instead of putting the salt inside, I sprinkle it on the top, and I find that when you do that, you get to use less sodium, otherwise it sort of gets lost inside the meat, and you get a salty pop with every Mm -hmm. single bite. Mm. So this I'm going to move over here and now for the star of our show. So these are peach caprese burgers and we have our peaches. What made you think to put the peach on a burger? Like I've never had that combo. I love caprese salads and I just wanted to do some sort of a neat spin with a burger and I feel like summer screams peaches. Peaches are about 90% water, so they're super hydrating and they're packed with vitamins. And of course, this is our superfood segment. So (laughs) I I just felt like, you know, perfect status for peaches. And all you're really going to do is slice them about a half inch thick and they don't have to be perfect. You'll see my pieces over here. You know, the, the, this is a little bit perfect, but then I even throw pieces and um, small little slivers right on the grill. Now, it's raining in New York, so we're going to show how versatile this is to do here. And one other thing, if I can now get this off. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so we're going to spray the top of our peaches, and all I'm going to season them with is a little bit of ground black pepper. Mm. And I feel like the pepper caramelizes with these peaches and it is out of this world. It's like a party for your taste buds. So you're going to come with me over to the stove. So I'm using a stovetop indoor grill here. Um, Also, truth be told, you could do this in a skillet, but if you do it in a skillet, you just won't get the char marks. Whoops, I'm losing an earpiece over here. Hold on. (laughs) Okay, live go. television. I <laughs> so um, I, I grill the turkey burgers for about five to six minutes on each side. And the peaches are face down just for about two to three minutes. And I also should, should say that this works beautifully with nectarines as well. Mm. I flip the peaches over only because I want to show you these gorgeous char marks. Oh, yeah. Is that, that beautiful? Yeah, really good. So good. Grilled peaches are delicious. And, are. and now we're ready for the build. So okay. I have... A whole grain bun here. I'm going to add on, let's do, a protein-packed patty. It's a caprese salad, so you know Mm. we're putting on some mozzarella. And now for some thick balsamic glaze. squeezable balsamic glaze there. Yes. (laughs) You could buy it in the store, or what you can also do is just reduce on a low heat, regular balsamic vinegar okay. until it's rich and tangy. We're running then out of we time, have but I see you're putting our on the basil, basil leaves. and then I'm assuming the peach. Hold on, we're going for the peaches right here. You guys, wow. I wish you could sink your teeth into this so baby. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that looks amazing. Uh, great. What a fun How big it is. And also, if anybody wants to go low carb, you can build it on a grilled portobello mushroom bun. Oh, wow. So whether you go low carb 
or Carbalicious. I'm telling you, it's a peachy keen <laughs> recipe. Good. I love it. Joy, thank you so much. I can't wait to try that one. Yum. And for this recipe, uh, head to today.com slash food. All right, there's nothing like biting into a juicy burger. And today we've got one that is, we never cooked this on our show. It's Ever. Totally I'm so different. surprised. Well, by the way, which is saying an awful lot, we yeah. cooked everything a couple of times. <laughs> Chef Ronnie was a celebrity judge on the Netflix show. Is it cake? He's got a lighter take on a summer classic. It's first of all, we missed you. It's so I good. I miss How you guys. This show, so is it fun to watch with kids? It, is it cake? It's kid friendly. It's, it's perfect. It's such a fun show. It's so it? fun. You guys will love it. Okay. I think your kids will love it. What's the premise? We taste it's, something. And you, it's basically like a cake that looks like a real thing. I think Remember Mikey Day was, on, Mikey that was on this show. Remember, you cut it's, into you it cut and into you see it. if it's a real cake or an something. object. Ooh, I yeah, love cool. that. Yeah. All right, let's talk about this unique burger recipe. What All right. is it? We're making a shrimp. Jenna goes straight for the knife. I don't know why. All right. It's an instinct. All right, just chop. Keep those fingers tucked in. So we're making a shrimp Shrimp burger. We have some butter here and we're going to add some scallions. We're just going to cook that up. What it does is soften up the flavor and gives it a really complex flavor. And what is this going to be used browns. for? The butter browns. This is going to be used for the shrimp mix. Okay. okay. So, it, so you could do, could you do like an onion or you prefer scallions? I prefer scallions because I think they're easier. They cook faster and they're kind of yeah. really, really tender I can't, and subtle. Why have we never heard of a shrimp burger? Is it us? Or? I don't no, know. It might just I've be you guys. It's not super popular, but I yeah. feel like I want to make it really popular. Okay. Right? All right. okay. So we fast. have our shrimp. It's deveined and cut. Um, it's in its raw. Three yeah, deveined it. Yeah, even in it. We're gonna have some cheddar cheese in there. Wow. Panko breadcrumbs. This is gonna really help make it a little bit more tender. Okay. A little bit of Louisiana. Louisiana. I'm like Tommy. Louisiana, Louisiana hot sauce. You can't beat it, baby. <laughs> That's for Hoda. And then a little bit of egg as well. Okay. Oh, so the egg is gonna it. bind it. Yeah. Okay. In that case, let's just add a little bit more. Okay. Then we have some fresh garlic. Mm -hmm. And then we have some smoked paprika. A little bit of salt. And then some ground black pepper. Yeah, that's we your patty mix. mix. This that's... is our patty mix, yeah. And this is actually inspired by a trip that me and my family uh, take to the San Juans. We go mm -hmm. shrimping. And this is what we make with we our shrimp. shrimping. We go shrimping, that yeah, cool. off the dock. Yeah. You are cool. I know, I'm very cool, guys. <laughs> no, not <laughs> at all. It's actually the really good. Yes, yeah, so then you add these scallions. You have the, the, the butter. butter. So it's like really mm. flavorful and really yummy. And then you just mix it so up. So it does stay together like a burger just because of what you put in there? Exactly, the egg and the breadcrumbs. Okay. So what it's going to do is soften a little bit. You want to divide it into four if you're making normal size burgers. Yeah. And if you're making sliders, just use an ice cream scoop, Ooh, scoop it I up. I like the idea of okay. sliders. Yeah. I love a slider. Yeah, what these are good. Mayonnaise? You're going to want a whole one though, Jenna, trust me. Okay. Okay, so then I mean, we have a little bit more hot sauce. Well, this is a spicy mayo, very easy. Some regular mayo, some hot sauce, some lemon juice for a little bit of brightness. We have garlic powder. Onion you know what's, powder. what I've just realized in my 40s? Mm. That I actually love a mayonnaise-based sauce, but I yeah. don't like mayonnaise. Weird. Oh, mayonnaise plain? Why no. is that? I love mayonnaise. I put it on everything. It's a childhood Bad issue, but, I, but like this, I want to eat. Okay, well, here you go. It's okay. like ice cream. You just want to put like a whole. So then what you want to do is you add a little bit of cooking oil. We're going to add some raw shrimp patties. And when you do it, they are pretty tender. You want to be pretty gentle with them. But once they cook up, they're going to stay together. No, she did a great job. Yeah, that Thank was you, Jenna. You're you must be a pro so how, long do you, to a, how long do you cook? Two to three minutes on each side until That's it's nice good. and brown and crispy. It you cooks know how so quick. fast. You know how yeah, quick shrimp Yeah, and cooks. you don't have to worry about being slightly raw or undercooked because it's just shrimp. Okay. You know, if you use fresh eggs, it's also safe. What you Wait, want to this, do? Let's talk about the bun. This oh, the is not bun. Your bun is bun. important. No, so you need. Yeah, we were just talking about this earlier. You need a front, like a, a brioche bun. Uh -huh. You want it to be nice and soft because you don't want that meat squeezing out of the bun when you yeah. when you bite into it, right? So you add a little bit of sauce or a lot because I love mayo. I love mm -hmm. mayo so much. Then we add some of that patty. Is that too much mayo? <laughs> you didn't add that much on this ours. This is literally how much mayo I love to eat because mm. I will dip it in the mayo as I'm putting it in. Mm. Iceberg lettuce, and then whoops. Ronnie, how is it's that? Got a, it's got let's, a bite. Let's cheers to that. Oh my God, cheers. cheers. It's delicious. It's the first it and good? best shrimp burger I've ever had. Oh my God. <laughs> well, don't have any more after this because you we know them is better. There's nowhere to go. Okay, to get this recipe, head today.com slash food. <laughs>
now with our Today Table series. And if your New Year's resolution is to stop spending so much money on unhealthy and expensive takeout, we have you covered. Mm -hmm. Chef and author of Fit Men Cook, Kevin Curry, is here with a delicious and healthy alternative to burgers. And remember, if you want to cook along with us, scan that QR code at the bottom of the screen, select Get Ingredients, then schedule a pickup or delivery. Kevin, we love when you're here. You're yeah, we love so much. We don't feel guilty about eating it, and it tastes it's so good. clean. Yes, and this is my favorite burger, y'all. This is a salmon burger okay. made with fresh salmon and not canned. So can't, can't, you got to tell people at home. There are people like <laughs> my mom who are watching who are going to say, "You're putting that good salmon, and you're going to blend yes, it." Yes, you know, but it's not fishy. This way. Okay. It's mm -hmm. Super good. So just gonna pulse blend about some of oh, it. Oh shoot! Well, you would if it was Okay, we're no, gonna never, pulse blend that, never worked. and it's gonna turn out to this mince, right? Okay. Just like this. There we go. Oh, yeah. there we go. It wasn't quick. Right. Pulse blend it. Pulse <laughs> blend. Okay. That's it. Th there we go. Just like that. And then for this one, we're gonna add just some chunks. Oh, you so add chunks just, to it? Yes, because because you want to know what you're eating, right? Yeah. You're gonna be like, what is this mince over here? And then well, just add the chunks in there, idea. and so oh. then just mix everything <laughs> together, just like that. And like, then what else we? And, and then we're gonna adding. This is some gluten-free panko. It looks kind of like rice. Rice Krispie what treats that a little bit. This is going to add, add some crunch and just also just some texture as a binder okay. as well. That's great. And salmon is so lean you know, that you don't need like an egg because right. it sticks together. Mm -hmm. This is some jalapeno because you know from Texas. Yes. And yes. then a little bit of smoked paprika. Mm. Nice. You don't need to put too much salt. But just a pinch of salt yeah. and then some black so pepper. So it's full in there. of flavor. Wow. Yeah, very doable. You're gonna mix that together so and then you create the, you know, these patties. Now. now I like to keep mine like uniform, so the scoop right here. And then if you want to keep them like this, oh. get yourself a little mold so that way you have your That's little burger a pro mold. Tip. Yes, nonstick skillet, yep. super easy to do. Get that thing How fired up. How apart on the grill? Um, no, oh. but I always put mine right. in the fridge for about 20 minutes first and then put them on the yeah. grill that Good. way. Mm -hmm. And then put them right here in the skillet. You're going to fry these up. And then, of Good. course, the same way with beef. Okay, we they are. They stopped eating. listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same <laughs> way with beef, though. You know, like medium well. It is good. I, I know. It's my favorite burger, y'all, isn't it? And then, you know, um, for the keto lovers over here, get you an avocado smash burger. Oh, look at this, put an guys. Egg, isn't it? This? It's so dope. Oh, look this is for the low carb lovers. And then just yes, smash well, it up yummy. with the avocado. It's healthy Yum. fat, heart healthy, wow, and, and it's super easy to make. Mm -hmm. Now, does it taste fishy? No. It does not taste fishy. You know what? It. Because I make salmon croquettes a lot, but it's canned. This yeah. keeps it from tasting like it, you're right. Yes. Oh, and it's goodness. good it quality. It's like a fresh burger. Yes, it is. Fresh it's salmon so good. Can the avocado on there? <laughs> well, oh my good. goodness, Kevin, that is Appreciate amazing. Thank yeah, you so much. Well, how long did you do that for? This is about three minutes per side. So it's mm. quick. Yeah, it's a quick and easy one. Wow, that is good. too. Really good. I'm sold. All right, Kevin, yeah. you're awesome. Time for a special Make Ahead Monday. If you're firing up the grill today, we have some creative and delicious ways to use all of your leftovers. You see them, you know them, you love them. Here to help us is chef and owner of Pig Beach in Brooklyn, Matt Abdu. Matt, welcome yes, to you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. We're let's, super excited today. Let's dig in. All right, we're first starting off with some <laughs> hot dog hash. Yes. We've got all these leftovers. You don't know what to do with them. We're going to do a little fun and unique twist on it all. Take your leftover hot dogs. Okay. We're going to slice them really thin, sear them up. In a pan, we're going to start with some chopped Good. or cut up potatoes. Easy Put them right enough. on in. Yep. This couldn't be easier. Yeah. So potatoes go in the pan, onions, pepper, some garlic, all just goes right on in. Okay. You're going to cover it, cook it for about 10 minutes. Will Al Roker sneak into your house and eat your food while, uh, you, while you cook? Only if you're lucky. Okay. Oh my God, one of the greatest <laughs> things ever. So you're okay. going to cover this, let yeah. this cook, uh, season with a little bit of salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Until the potatoes are nice and tender, they're gonna start to take on a little bit of color. Did you just make this up? I've never heard of this. I, you know what? I, it's kind of inspired by that Peruvian dish. It was like hot dogs and French fries, mm. but it was like, what way oh, can you do? Yes. I wanted to do like a breakfast, lunch, dinner kind I of love thing it. with all these leftovers. Love it. So the potatoes are gonna cook with the onions, and you have all these leftover hot dogs sliced about a quarter of an inch thick, okay. browned up like you're doing fried bologna. Okay. Toss all mm. those in with some sliced scallions to sort of finish and garnish. I love and just give it a good old this? mix. So this is our all-purpose barbecue seasoning. I've made this a few times before for you guys. Okay. It's just a, a great thing to use as a seasoner for the hash or for your ribs or for burgers, chicken, whatever you want to do. What's in it? And we got some cumin, granulated garlic, granulated onion, hatch, chili, salt, pepper, garlic, 
paprika, and some thyme. Ooh. I need all those on That is delicious. We do. This is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, Am I allowed to say that? Pink Beach NYC at home. And we're just going to season the top it's of it with a little bit of sprinkle of that all purpose barbecue seasoning. Okay. And breakfast is on the table with some leftover hot dogs. This is an A plus. All, all right. right. Rock and roll. All right. So we got some leftover burgers. Yes, sir. What can we do? All right. We're going to take them. We're going to crumble them all up as you have them seen in this pan here. Mm -hmm. This is roughly about uh, five hamburgers or so. And then we're going to take the peppers, cut off the tops, right. and some onions and some uh, garlic. And you're just going to saute them all until they're nice and soft and translucent. It. You're going to dump that in the bowl. Yeah. Uh, some bulgur wheat. We have bulgur oh, wheat that's mm -hmm. been just soaked, strained. That's going to go in the bowl. So that's kind of your binder? Yeah, this is kind of inspired from a dish I grew up eating called kusa. My father used to make it for me all the time. Yeah, Dad, kusa in a yeah. soft pepper form. Uh, we're going to add some cumin, some zaatar, some salt, some pepper. Mm. Mm. And we have some uh, basil and mint. We're going to mix all that in there. And then for a little, yeah, give it a good old stir, stir for me. And uh, you kind of have a little cheese and ah, stuffed pepper. So we're going to mm -hmm. put some Parmesan in there. Some eggs to work as the binder that's gonna kind of hold it all together when mm -hmm. it cooks. And last but not least, a little bit of Greek yogurt. Oh, so the Greek yogurt's gonna give it a nice creamy flavor profile. And also mm -hmm. that yogurt goes really well with the meat. Yeah, um, it's not dry. Yeah, it's, well that's it's very that's moist. the hope. The cheese, the yogurt, the eggs mm -hmm. makes it all really mm -hmm. nice and moist. We're gonna stuff it in these peppers. Right. We're gonna put a can of fire roasted tomatoes on the bottom of it, oh. which you can get at the grocery try store, they're absolutely mm -hmm. delicious. Cover it with foil, bake for about 45 minutes to an hour until the peppers are tender and the peppers are cooked through. Garnish it with this little uh, mm. tzatziki sort of New York City white sauce, wow. I call it, uh -huh. recipeontoday.com. Mm. Yeah. Check it out. It's absolutely fun, delicious, it's great delicious. way of using up leftover burgers. I've fantastic. never thought of reusing hamburgers Well, most in that people way. don't. And, and, I I and why peppers. would you, right? What a great idea. All right, so moving on, finally, dilly dilly. We got yes. some pasta salad dilly for dilly. you, girl. Uh, I'm excited for this. You growing up some vegetables like me, if you're at home for any sort of holiday, you got some leftover grilled mm -hmm. vegetables. There's so many different things you can do with it. What I love during the summertime is making pasta salad. I grew up having this in my fridge mm -hmm. for my mom. Super simple. You have leftover peppers, zucchini, onions, some grilled corn. We're going to take it all and Throw pour this right, right in. into a all pound right. of tricolor uh, pasta or whatever pasta you like. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a really simp and simple and easy Italian vinaigrette, some red wine vinegar, some olive oil, some oregano, uh, salt, pepper, chili flake, a little bit of honey. Gives it a little nice You're sweetness. Good with yes. Well, thank you. It means a roll to me. <laughs> that is And job. then we're just going to add in some tomatoes. Some Perfect. feta cheese. Oh. And, I love the feta and, olive oh, combo. Me too, oh, girl. Man. And then these are kalamatas. You can really use black olives or whatever olive you really like. Perfect. And then we're going to dump onto it that Italian seasoning. Oh, Italian man. vinaigrette. Oh. Give it a nice big old stir. The great thing about this is it'll keep in your refrigerator for the full week. I was going to say, how far advanced could you, you make it? Well, it's better if you make it the night before. That oh way the God. pasta really gets to marinate it better in that than vinaigrette. Size. It's good, oh right? Wow. Simple. This my mom, Ma, love it. We used to grow up eating this. My mom would have a whole Tupperware of this in the fridge in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Every meal, oh, wow. she'd pull it out, put it on the table with whatever we're eating in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Take this with you to the out. beach. So Why not? You know, oh, yeah. anywhere. Fresh. Warm or cold. It's fresh. Or, yeah. It's light. It's just such a great, uh, simple, easy thing to do with some leftover veggies. Mm. It is time for a media edition of Make Ahead Monday. Mm. And Jordan Andino, mm. chef and owner of Flip Siggy here in New York, is going to show us how to make a pork adobo. How do you, how do you start? Yeah, you know, so that's why. So I have a glove right here just for in terms of time management. But right here you have actually a pork butt or a pork shoulder. So what, what I like about this is that it's a delicious cut of meat, but it just takes some time to braise. It's cheap, it's easy, and it's not that intimidating. Notice it's really big. All you got to do, it's typically boneless and skinless. Okay. So all you, all you got to do is just pretty much cut it up into maybe one and a half, two-inch cubes. It doesn't need to be pretty. You kind of just... Go at it and just make large cubes so that it just cuts the cooking time down from like three hours to maybe two hours instead. Oh my gosh! So, so super good. simple. Yeah, you know, you just have the you know chunks like this. As you guys can see, it's not you know too crazy. Okay. And then once you, once you break down your big piece, you'll have kind of your nice bowl of like already chopped up meat right there. You guys are enjoying it already. So, so what are you adding? See. What are you <laughs> adding? Yeah, before, where is all this flavor the coming? The flavor from? is coming like before it starts to braise. Yeah, so, you know, um, all you have to do, it's pretty simple at that point. Once it's cut, um, let's pretend the stove top is right here. We have my pot. All you got to do is add a little bit of oil to, to the base, and this is going to help you saute and caramelize everything and, okay. and garner a lot more flavor from the minced garlic, which I just threw in. And then after that, once the garlic browns, you're going to throw in your pork shoulder that you just cut. So you're just going to put that in and just let that really – kind of brown and just get some and more flavor, so a little bit of caramelization. It's not too hard. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, no, it's it is perfect. So delicious. Yeah, no, no. And it's, it's, it's supposed to be just delicious and easy. After that, the flavor that you guys are getting comes from a couple of things. It's going to be your oyster sauce, okay. which oh. is like, you know, seafood, oyster flavored yeah. sauce, along with a little bit of sriracha, which is kind of your, mm. you're going to give you your hot and sweetness right there. 
But really what I want to concentrate on the flavors are these three ingredients right here. You have your swan sea soy, and then your dati puti vinegar, and then your mushroom soy Where sauce. Where do you get those? My grandmother's going to kill me. These are her, the three combination recipe to make the adobo, and the true Filipinos oh, out there will really appreciate these. Oh, secret is out. These. Yeah. <laughs> secret is out. Yeah, so all you got to do, mm. yeah, basically all you got to do is just put, you know, pour all this in there. It's super simple. You just pour it in. It's about like three quarters cup of the swan soy, three quarters cup of the dark mushroom soy. Mm. Those have a lot of sodium in it. So you don't need to add any salt. That's going to give you that awesome flavor. And then that tanginess that you guys are tasting is from this cane sugar vinegar from the Philippines oh. here. Oh, yeah. Where can you buy that? So, you know, there's a couple of uh, like, you know, we'll call them Asian marts all around, like Queens, Jersey, and um, in the East Village. Um, you know, it's, and also Chinatown. It's hard to find. But once you do find it, these are ingredients that you always want to keep so stocked good. because it's so delicious. Yeah. And it's a great replacement mm. for just your regular kind of white what? vinegar. Well, it I'm is gonna, so good. But, you know, Jordan, I'm yeah, enjoying I mean, so this over you, rice. But I know you can also, once you're left with all these leftovers, you can turn it into this amazing torta. Yum. Yeah, you're right. You know, so, you know, once it's done, you know, you have your beautiful plate like this, which you guys are having. And then you have your torta. So your torta, which you guys have right there, mm. are, you know, that's how we get to the leftover Mondays. Because you make a big... Big, you know, batch of this mm. two-pound pork. You got to build a sandwich. So I have this. I have mine right here. All you guys got to see right there is you have your, right, you know, your toast and then your meat, and it's already made. All you got to do is just start building it. So you have your bottom bun, a oh little bit of mayo, a little bit of hot sauce. But the really, the real concentration here are your pickled onions. So I started mm. with very simple pickled onions. It's just salt, sugar, white vinegar. Boil it, throw in some red onions, and you get that beautiful pink color oh, there. so good. Yeah, hey, it's going to add, like, a really nice tang. Hey, Go real ahead. quick, real quick, yeah, because pork is so hard to cook for some people. And, and I got to say, I'm, I'm Cuban, so like Filipinos, we eat a lot of pork. This is amazing. How do you know when your pork's done? Okay, that's a great question. So I'm going to show you guys what, what that's supposed to look like. So as you guys can see, you, you know because of how tender everything is. So all you got to do is just... Cook it, oh, cook it, braise it for pretty much like two hours, and then you're going to get this. And I'll give you a nice little reveal real quick. It should look something like that. Oh, okay. okay. So any of you guys can see apart. it. It just really just falls apart. So here's how you know. All, you know that everything's ready. You just got to take your pork, put it on a plate, and then you're going to see how easy it is. You just take a fork or two and just oh, press it. Wow. There you go. That's why it's so And you're going to see how quickly it is to pull because – that's how you know it's done. Two hours, medium heat, and look at that. It just okay. comes apart Jordan, like that. It, Jordan, you can we're barely out hold of time, but we, and we have um, happy plates. We, we, we can't have happy stop eating. Plate. We've yeah. eaten all of our I've food. had sauce all over my face. <laughs> this clean. Thank you so much for joining us. Here to share some delicious Korean cuisine, celebrity chef, entrepreneur, Jet Taylor. What's happening, guys? Hey. Chef. So good to be oh, here. So good to uh, have you here. We awesome. love short ribs. Yes, we do. And especially but Korean make short them. ribs. Mm. And I think it's really great for Make Ahead Mondays because mm -hmm. it's one of those dishes, it is maximum flavor, minimum ingredients. Can you put garlic in soy yes, sauce? Yes, sir, I will. So garlic, we know, is oh, uh, a pungent. Uh, I'm going to do brown sugar around you right. for a little mm. sweet. And then we'll do sesame oil. Sesame oil. Yeah, and that's going to give you aroma. You go there. Right. And then here. 
here's the secret ingredient to Korean barbecue, a little sweet. Uh, this also helps break down the toughness of the meat. Um, apple pears. Apple really? pears. Apple really? pears is what you want to do. So yeah. it has to be an apple, like you, it, know, you can't just use any kind of pear. No, no, you could use any kind of pear, but you know what? This helps break down meat. So things like uh, pineapple and things like papaya juice, that'll yeah. work too. So do you want to marinate that? Yep. I have one ready to go, so we'll swap. I love it you come because you put us to work. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you know, many hands, little work. So ah, like here we thing. go. Uh, marinate four hours to overnight because it's a big piece of meat. Mm -hmm. Dab off all the marinade because the marinade's done its job. Get that sizzling. Uh, yes. Craig, you got this? Yes, sir. I'm all this, over it. Uh, cook to your doneness. 125 is medium rare internal, but that, that becomes that sliced up. I just want to pick up that up. whole bone and it just eat it. It becomes so oh, good. Look at and, that. So now that's Monday. <laughs> that's Monday. We still have the rest of the week here. And so we have better things to do. Come on so over to Tuesday. Are you ready? I'm ready for Let's Tuesday. Let's pop Tuesday. So are you ready to cook with me? Let's switch. All right, what do you need all to right, do? All right, garlic in a hot pan. Wait, first of all, what are we making? Yeah, so we're going to make a, a Korean chop chai noodles. Just think about it as lo mein, okay. like Korean style. Yum. So let's do garlic. Okay. And you can just put just all the veggies stuff in. in all the as veggies. long as the oil is hot and the garlic is ready to go. Carrots, green peppers, and onions. Onions. You got, okay. yeah, so uh, all the veggies. And then the, remember that, that Monday's meat yes. becomes Tuesday's noodles. Yum. So that's going to go. We'll stir that up. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, I should probably that not eat out of it and stir it. No, I do that all the time. <laughs> I mean, that's how, you know what I'm saying? So, so um, noodles, don't freak out. Uh, rice noodles, egg noodles. But it can, this could be Any pasta. Kind? I just want you to cook it al dente. Okay. Make sure it's not overcooked because oh, it's got to so still yummy. ride in the pan a little bit. Okay. You want to stir that and up? And I just tried it, and there's, the seasonings are amazing. So what are you putting in it? Oh, you got, again, this for for Korean flavors. Yeah. Soy sauce is salt. Okay. Right. Just think about it as salt. Try it, guys. Sesame okay. oil is aroma. Okay. I don't want a lot. Salt, and just a pinch aroma. of sugar to take the edge off. The so vegetables good. carry a lot of flavor. Look how healthy that Look is. Look at this. Mm. You know that's where you meat is on the side. First day meat was in the middle. I like to serve it warm, but you know, it makes a phenomenal pasta so salad. It's a really nice you know cold I mean? salad. Good. Just yeah. remember, the secret though there is uh, don't overcook those noodles. Okay. okay. Yeah, make sure those noodles are super al dente, even pasta. Now, fried rice. Fried rice. I've always wanted to, want to make... learn to make fried rice the, at home. I'm going to tell you the absolute secret to fried rice. Okay. Whisk those eggs. And I'm going I'm to put aromatics. We've done this before. You've seen it once before, okay. all the veggies. But the real secret, guys, to making fried rice without using a lot of oil, put those eggs in if right, you don't mind, right Dylan. Okay. And I'm going to show you. Don't let them cook all the way. When the eggs are wet, uh -huh. you're going to put the really? rice right yeah. into wet eggs. Because ma egg has this magic ability to coat the rice because wow. it's got protein in okay. it. It's got a little natural fat in it. Watch. Look at the bottom of the pan. It doesn't stick. Wow. So it's egg, and once this comes up, okay. I'll season. You stir, and yeah, I that's season. Okay. That's next level. Oyster oh sauce. You Oyster sauce. Yeah. Okay. Soy sauce. I've got the meat and the, remember the Korean barbecue short ribs? Yes. And the vegetables. Once the oh, egg look cooks up, looks what it, look what it becomes. This is amazing. I'll do some this. here. This I'll do some here. And you know here. what it is? It's full of flavor and not salt. Like it just it tastes, yes. you know what I mean? Asian, good Asian foods shouldn't be salt bombs, right? This we should be balancing out vegetables, mm. sweetness, five flavors. Hot, sour, salty, sweet, I'm savory. And hot, sour, That's salty, amazing. sweet, savory, big veggies. That's how mm. you do it. So I love rotisserie chicken. I feel like it's the ultimate shortcut. It's packed with protein and obviously you can enjoy it as a standalone with vegetables, but I'm going to show you two ways to sort of take it to the next level. So you would slice the top, you take back the skin and you take those breasts and using your hands, you're just going to shred them so you get lots of small little pieces. Okay. And one rotisserie chicken will yield about three cups of that chicken breast. Mm -hmm. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to make, you can see these over here. We're gonna make mm, Asian style chicken lettuce wraps. And I'm gonna bring you over to my stove and we're gonna get cooking. Okay. So Ooh, here yeah, I, like I have, camera this is, <laughs> this is um, one onion that was finely diced and then I just sauteed it about five minutes. Mm -hmm. And the party starts. I add in some hoisin sauce, okay. a little bit of reduced sodium soy sauce. Mm -hmm. This is rice wine vinegar. These are just, you could see these powders, garlic powder and ginger, ginger powder. You can use fresh, but I want to make this super simple. Yes. And it comes together lickety split. And you can get this that hoisin is, sauce at Asian markets. I wondered about that. Yes. Yes. You eat with pho all you the can, time. You can, you can get it at any grocery is store. Is it common day. now? Okay. Hoisin yeah. sauce is everywhere. Yes. Okay. I didn't know. Everywhere. I it's everywhere. And what I just added, you see, this is chopped water chestnuts. Ah. It's part of the tuber vegetable family, and it adds like that crisp crunch. crunch. Right. It's mm. so delicious, and it's very, very light. Okay. Scallions. If
if you're like me and you absolutely love onion, and a little cashews or peanuts. Yeah. Right. So you you're can gonna leave those out if you're allergic. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And you mix this up, and now we're ready for our chicken. So this is how much chicken I got oh, wow. from that rotisserie, three cups, and you just mix this whole thing together, and you let it simmer for about 10, 15 minutes until mm -hmm. everything's hot. And I'm going to bring you back over to the island. Okay. Come on over here. It's so dinner. easy. Sure. I like how yeah. it's always in one skillet. That makes it so much easier. Yeah. Yes. And, and they're mm. low carb, they're packed with protein. Mm, and guys, right. you could gobble down so many of these and you'll feel yes. like you're in your favorite Asian restaurant. And you got barbecue yeah. sliders. Ooh, sliders. Okay, are these are saucy and scrumptious. I'm bringing <laughs> you back over to my stove now. Okay. This is so funny. Let me clear this. Okay. Okay, don't judge me on my messiness. Are you no, kidding me? That's like an <laughs> always ready <laughs> set that you, you live don't have, in. You don't have our <laughs> food prep staff like Katie Stulo oh doing stuff. You're so right. So over here, what I'm doing is, this is going to be um, red wine vinegar. We're going in a totally different flavor direction. Yeah. Now we have soy sauce. Right. This is a can of no salt added tomato sauce. Um, this is the spirit of sloppy joes. I guess we could call yeah. these sloppy joys. Ah, and this is joys. A, little, <laughs> a little bit of, uh, that was tomato paste to really bolden up the flavor, mm -hmm. salt and pepper. And guys, as the signature sloppy joe would have it, mm. I'm adding a little bit of yellow mustard. Oh, okay. That's unexpected. Yeah. Mix it up, mm. and now we have our chicken again. Here we go. Boom. Chicken goes in, and you mix this up. I'm going to bring you back over to my island. Come okay. on, guys. I love this. I feel we're like back. we're in her house with her. I know. <laughs> and there you have it. Yum. How Joy, much do I want to feed you right now? I wish I, I wish I could wish give you, you a bite. That's, oh. a great, that's a great lunch for anybody. Yeah. Joy Bauer. Yum. Bauer, thanks so much. Always Thank good you, to Joy. see you. And for these... Yeah, I love that. For these... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that looks good. For these that's recipes yummy. and more, head to today.com slash food. <laughs>
<laughs> so uh, this is a, actually a dish that my wife likes to cook all the time. Oh, so it's pork okay. shoulder that we have in here, bone and pork shoulder. Okay. Uh, make a nice spice rub, rub it really well. This is my pork rub that I, I sell, but you can just find a good barbecue rub. What's in your, oh, wow. What's in your rub? It's guajillo chilies, fresh rosemary, thyme, salt, wow. pepper, cumin. It's really delicious. Okay. And then we add some poblano chilies that are just raw, okay? Yeah. Same with the onion, chopped white onion. Then we're adding a can of chipotle chilies because we like to have it hot and spicy. We do like it hot and spicy. And then a little bit of water. We cover it. It takes six hours. And that's it. You that's can it. walk away. And so then when it's ready, it comes out like this. I've also made some potatoes that we boil. Then we smash them and then grill them on a plancha. Really? Really quickly, simple, what really do you call, delicious. What do you call them, those potatoes? Plancha potatoes. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, let's move you. Don't come here now. What are you doing? So the next dish that we're going to make this. And you said you got she the leftover pork? She already said you got the leftover pork. Can I tell you something? Tell me something. Dylan, tell him what you just said in my ear. This is the best thing I've ever had. <laughs> this, this quesadilla is amazing. This should be on that show, the best thing I ever ate. So let's explain okay. what you're doing. So let's do it. So here we got a saute pan. I've got some... Uh, Bell peppers, we're gonna add in here like this. It's fresh. Some chopped onions, yeah. Really See, good. you know, vegetables are like people, right? They come in different sizes, they come in different flavors, they come in different personalities. And you wanna make sure that when you saute the vegetables, that uh -huh. you give it time to develop. Meaning, we don't want them to be raw, but we, want them, we don't wanna cook them all the way. We want the crunch of the vegetable. That's why, left. is that why it tastes so fresh? That's right. So then oh, we so take a tortilla, okay. let's spread some goat cheese on here like this. Goat cheese, that's And now you're gonna take the beans and spread it on I'm this side. Eating goat cheese. And then you puree the beans? <laughs> puree the beans, spread on this side. I've this never, side. I, I'm a horrible. I know, it's, it's hard to develop 50-50, but it's like. <laughs> puree with goat cheese, then we that's put, why it's so good. We put the There's mixture on like this, oh. okay? And then we're gonna fold it in half. <laughs> Look guys. After. You Did I do too cheese. many beans? No, you can actually you can make have these. I know, that's what I'm saying. It's Hold life it changing. Half. Oh, you're right about that. And press it down. Right. Now, and then just swap take it on the there. brush and oh, brush it with a little bit of yeah. canola oil. Like so. Now you can do this outside, okay? Okay. If you're at the house, you can do it on the grill. Now put it okay, right on the grill. I feel like I did that perfectly. You obviously did it well, perfectly. Well, you put the outside, yeah. So, yeah, so you put it. I'm gonna, you know, it's going to look great. Don't worry about me. You just do you. That's the most cooking you've done in two years. That's the best. That's the most cooking I've ever seen her do on the show, by yeah. the way. Now let me go back <laughs> to you. Yes. Back to eating. Really well. Tony, it yeah. finishes, and then you want to put a little bit of the creamy jalapeno sauce on. Oh, all the jalapeno blades. Okay, we only have a minute left, but we've got ramen noodles to make now. Okay, ramen noodles. So here, same pork, right? Yep. We whip this egg, we okay. add a little salt and pepper because we're gonna we're gonna dice this egg up later. So we okay. add it in here. Let the egg cook all the way through. So we're gonna roll that around. Okay. A little oil. Don't there. worry about it, it'll just keep cooking. Okay. Then we take the pork shoulder mm -hmm. and we drop it in this dressing like this. This What's has in that? green onions, garlic, a little bit of soy sauce, and we mm -hmm. let it sit for five minutes. Perfect. Then we take ramen noodles, the cheap ramen noodles that you buy at the store, right? Nice. Cook them, don't worry about the seasoning. Take the noodles, put them here like this okay. after they're cool. We got some beef sprouts. We got some sake. Mm -hmm. We got some rice wine vinegar. Mm. We got some nori. Wow, right here. all those Asian flavors. And then you take flavors. your egg and you, oh, you slice it up after it's cooked. Okay. And it gets like this. You top that on top. And then you take your pork that's been sitting in the juice. Mm. You mix it up. Okay. You act like a great oh, American hero. Good. And, and then it you totally eat it. Changes How the is flavor it? of everything. This is delicious. It's nice. So three Thank different ways. Make Thank it you so Monday. much for these recipes and more. Log on sure. to today.com slash so good. Yeah.
there's warming up, the last thing you want to do is to spend hours inside cooking. That's no fun. Katie Lee Beagle, co-host of Food Networks. The Kitchen has a simple sheet pan recipe that got more than a million what? views when she first posted yes. it. Is this a viral recipe? Wow. I mean, people love salmon, it turns out, True. and they love sheet pan recipes. All you have to do, chop up some broccoli and some sweet potatoes. You want your sweet potatoes to be in cubes, and your broccoli can be, you know, a little bit on the medium side, sure. because you want everything to cook at the same time oh. on the sheet pan. Okay. Uh. So instead of buying fillets of salmon, we're gonna just do one big piece. And do you so ask that them at the, the supermarket to de-skin it? For this recipe, I do. Most of the time, I cook salmon with, with the, the skin, skin on. on. But for this one, because you'll see we're going to add a sauce to it, I like it skinless. Okay. So I'm going to add a little bit of oil to our Super veg. Simple. Yeah, and some salt and pepper. Salt and and all I did was there. Yep. And pepper that salmon up for me. Ooh, fun. So that's all we're doing to it. And then we're going to make our sauce because this is a honey mustard. Ooh. I did didn't even tell you all what we were making. Honey, <laughs> honey mustard, oh, salmon, yum. with sweet potatoes and broccoli. So I've got equal parts of honey, and I like to use a, a like coarse a mustard. Poupon. Yes, nice, yes. <laughs> Very oh, good. Sense. Speaking yeah. of the Paris test, right? You're getting yeah, ready totally. for your travels. Exactly. <laughs> and then mix it together. This goes right on top of the salmon. I mean, so simple. And some of it's going to run off, and that's okay, because we're going to mix that with our veggies. So Willie, take those veggies mm -hmm. and okay. scatter them scatter. all around. Can I touch them with the yeah. Okay, protocol nowadays. So you washed your hands. Yeah. yeah. I washed earlier. All right, so that's going to go into the oven. Oh, and I put parchment paper on because that makes our cleanup a lot easier. That's Remove. smart. Oh, that's yes. Very smart. Yes, yeah. then you're barely, you won't have to use Scrape any elbow cream. Yeah. yeah. All right, so put that in the oven, 425 degrees. It comes out like this. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's very easy. We love it. How, Irish how, how long for 425? Too. About 25, 30 minutes. Now, if you want to do this in fillets, cook your broccoli and sweet potatoes for about 10, 15 minutes first, then add your salmon fillets and cook it the rest of the way. Okay. Because it'll be a different cook time. All right, so you want to have some leftovers for lunch of yes, that we salmon. Do. We're going to make a little salmon salad here with a lemon caper vinaigrette. Oh, I love caper so me much. Too. Yes, me so too. we've got our Here's lemon. Let's put a little zest in mm. there and some capers and Dijon mustard. Yeah. Mm. Salt and pepper it up. Sure. Little splash of white wine vinegar here. Wow. Whisk it, whisk it, whisk it. And then we're going to come down here to our salad. How beautiful. I've just got bib lettuce. I've got thinly sliced celery in here. I've always got celery in my fridge. Some cucumbers go in. Good cutting, Jen. You know, you can kind of just use what you have. No, that's good. You said that. No, it's really and, uh, good. <laughs> Jenna, you said you don't cook much. You're doing a great no, job. No, well, I, I assemble. Assemble. And I okay. chop. Mm -hmm. All right. We got chives. By the way, does parsley. your daughter eat cucumbers? Not really. Okay. No, I she can't will. get a vegetable she in She will. Occasionally sweet potatoes, occasionally avocado. Okay. All right, so we're going to add our salmon in here. You just flake it up after it comes out. And you can also use canned salmon for this if you didn't make the recipe. You okay. know, canned salmon's a great thing to have around. If you want to add these veggies to it, you can. If not, have it right on its own. Looks Add beautiful. the dressing wow. to it. I've got some down here for you guys. Yeah, we're coming oh, to taste. Thank you very much. Come taste. Did you get one though? Have That's... a bite. This Where's is yours? mine. Oh, yeah. She has I, the bowl. Like, right out of the bowl. I like large portions of salad. <laughs> I call it my trough salad. I just, you just eat kinda straight out get of in it. There, huh? Yeah. <laughs> The sun is shining and we fired up the grill, y'all. Join me, Jocelyn Delk Adams, for a summer barbecue to remember. As a chef and cookbook author, I love to add a modern twist to classic recipes. With my tips, you can host an outdoor cookout that looks effortless and won't cost a fortune. Bringing all of your loved ones together, it makes the day that much sweeter. Booze, this party's going to be epic. Growing up, I absolutely loved summer barbecues. For me, it just felt like a time to get family and friends together and really just enjoy the weather and each other and some good food. My inspiration for a party comes from a variety of places. I love everything from travel to new restaurants. It all sort of kind of informs all of my ideas and decision making when I'm throwing a party. I guess you could call me an events rebel. I really love to break the rules. And I love that because it's really fun to sort of 
have something unexpected at your event, the first thing that's most important with creating an event that you absolutely love is starting with the vibe and building it with your personality. If you could bottle my personality, it would probably be like a bright orange color, so that's gonna be all through this event. I love throwing barbecues outside. If you've got a pool, which we happen to have, like why wouldn't you set an entire event around that? You know you are always at a great party when the playlist is hot. So I wanted to focus on creating a playlist that had a lot of fun, energetic songs that made people wanna get up and party. I love games at events. Seriously, if we do not have games at my event, it's not one of my events. I love everything from activities that I actually make up. I mean, it's all about making sure that your guests have a good time and games help with that. Next, make sure that you stay organized. I am truly type A, y'all, okay? I am a person who lives and breathes by spreadsheets. When I'm thinking about an event, I start with the spreadsheet so I can stay organized, keep my guests in there, keep what I've ordered, keep what I'm serving. Literally every single detail goes in that spreadsheet. For your guest list, it's truly important that you spend a lot of time thinking about who you want seated at your table. I decided to make this party all about the amazing gals in my life. I really wanted it to be this mix of amazing women that I appreciate and who I'm inspired by. And finally, create a unique menu. When I start to think about my menu planning for my barbecue, I really wanna knock my guest socks off. I love to incorporate things that are in season. So a couple recipes I'm thinking about are maybe a watermelon salad. Watermelon is in season right now, so that's gonna be so fresh. Also, corn is in season. So, and I've got this like amazing corn pudding, but the key is the, the corn is grilled. So it's like a nice, Nice time to actually use the grill, get some nice char on that corn, and actually give it some nice texture and bite. I think I know exactly how I want this day to flow, so let's get in the kitchen and start getting that menu going. For this barbecue, I selected some of my favorite recipes that I'm gonna show you how to make. First, we're gonna start with my simple ribs. Then we're gonna move on to my elote fried corn pudding from my new cookbook, Everyday Grand, along with my watermelon salad, and then finally, my berry rhubarb punch. We're gonna get started with my simple ribs recipe, and it starts with a dry rub. I've got some Cajun seasoning here. I've got some kosher salt, gotta get some nice salt in there. I've got some mustard powder. And then I've got onion and garlic powder. I'm gonna add both of those in here. Black pepper, some smoked paprika, and I've got some chili powder. Cumin, I love cumin in literally everything. And finally, I've got some brown sugar to add some sweetness. And then we're just gonna do a quick whisk of all of this, combining it. So I started making my own spice rubs at home when I realized how easy it was to do. Like you could literally just go in your pantry, grab all of your favorite ingredients and pull together something that's explosive flavor wise. I happen to like a lot of different flavors in my dry rub because I want a lot of different sensations to happen when you bite into that rib, right? You want that sweet, you want that heat, you want that nuance of flavor. And so all of these different components are gonna pull that off. And once that's combined, we're gonna get that on our ribs. These are beef ribs. And I'm going to grab some oil spray. So I like to use the oil spray. It's a little bit more controlled and it just kind of keeps things a tiny bit cleaner during this process. The oil is going to become an adhesive for our dry rub. And then we're gonna start to add our dry rub right over our ribs. And you can add as much or as little as you want. The purpose of a dry rub is really to get that flavor penetrated into our ribs. And it's gonna take a little time because we're not breaking this down with what you would usually find in a wet rub. I'm gonna flip these over. We're gonna do another spray. And then we're gonna get that dry rub all up in there as well and you really wanna push it into the meat so it really penetrates and you get all of that flavor. 
My favorite thing about barbecues are definitely the ribs. It's my favorite recipe. It's the quintessential barbecue recipe, right? So I think that all of my side dishes are gonna be the perfect complement to this main dish because this is really hearty, but it's got so much flavor, but everything else is sort of light and refreshing. So it's a perfect complement. All right, these look nice and rubbed down. So I did a quick rinse of my hands and now we're gonna get these ready to go into the fridge. I've got some heavy duty foil because we wanna make sure that every little crevice, everything is covered so we really get that marinade to seep in. I'm gonna go one rack at a time here. Really get it covered. The ribs are wrapped and ready to go. I'm going to add these to my baking sheet, and then I'm gonna pop this in the fridge for about six hours at least, so we can really get that marinade in there. And then we'll be ready to grill. All right, our ribs are marinating, and now when we come back, we're gonna get into our sides. While our ribs are marinating, I'm gonna get started on my elote fried corn pudding. This recipe was inspired by my trip to Mexico City and I wanted to really sort of mix in some of that authentic Mexican flavor with some of my southern roots. The first step is in grilling our corn. I've got some shucked corn here and I'm going to add a little vegetable oil to the outside of it so we can make sure that this doesn't stick to the grates once we're grilling. Now I'm gonna take these out to the grill. I love adding in that char and that bite of grilled corn and it's an amazing way to use it while it's in season too. Now that we've grilled our corn, it's time to get started on our filling. So I'm going to start here with some Mexican crema that's gonna go into our big bowl. This is so rich and creamy, it's gonna add so much flavor. And then I've got some melted butter. We've got four eggs here, and it's best that you crack them outside of the big bowl, so if you get any shell, it doesn't get into your major mixture here. Now I want to zest some lime so I can add in some citrus flavor. It's really gonna brighten this up. Now I've got some sugar. If you've ever had corn pudding in the South, you know it's a little bit sweet, so we gotta add in that sweet. I'm adding in some cornstarch. This is gonna help thicken everything up. And then a few spices to add some additional flavor. I've got some garlic powder, and I've got some cumin. Now this is where I get to add our grilled corn that we took off the cob. You can get that nice bite and that texture from those kernels. This is creamed corn that you can find just right in the can in your grocery store. And it's a very different texture from that grilled corn we made earlier. 
We're also going to add in some cotilla cheese. I'm going to mix all of this together, make sure it's nice and combined. Before we add this to our casserole dish, I'm just gonna lightly spray this so we can make sure that it doesn't stick. And then we're just gonna pour all of our corn pudding mixture right into our casserole dish. I'm gonna add some foil to this so we can have a nice even bake and it doesn't brown too much. Now I'm gonna pop this in the oven and we're gonna let this set up and get so nice and beautiful and brown and then we'll be ready to serve. Our corn pudding is out of the oven and let's check it out. Oh my goodness. You can just see all of that grilled corn that's come to the top and this sort of creamy, custardy texture. I like to add some decorations and really take it to another level. I like to add a little bit more of the cotilla cheese. And then I also like to strategically place a few little limes here, little lime slices. Adds a little color as well. I'm gonna add some cilantro too. And then finally, I'm gonna sprinkle on a little tahini, and that little brightness with that chili and lime flavor is just gonna take this up to like a whole nother level. It's so good. Our corn pudding is ready to serve, and I know the guests are gonna love this. Now it's time to get started on my watermelon salad. This watermelon salad is so perfect for this barbecue because watermelon's in season, it's sweet, it's juicy, and it reminds me of childhood when I used to have watermelon every summer. Also, this recipe is important to me because, you know, watermelon sometimes can be pretty controversial for black people. We can feel uncomfortable sometimes having it because of the history associated with it. So with this recipe, I really wanted to sort of say, we can reclaim it. We can feel comfortable having it again, and I hope that it brings up more positive light towards this food. The first step to making my watermelon salad is pickling some onions, and this is gonna give that nice tart flavor. People have no idea how easy it is to pickle onions at home, and I'm gonna show you. So I've got some water. I'm gonna add this to my little pot here, some white vinegar, some sugar, and some salt. And then I'm gonna crank on our heat here. And we're gonna let this get to about medium high heat. We wanna really let that sugar dissolve and then it's gonna be ready for pickling our onions. Our sugar has dissolved. I'm just gonna pop a garlic clove in here for some additional flavor. And then I'm gonna pour this right over our onions. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna cover this up. And now this is gonna go in the fridge for about two hours. Now we're gonna make our chipotle dressing. This recipe starts with our shallots. I'm going to add some oil. We wanna get our shallots sizzling in this medium heat so we can get them nice and tender. All right, these look good to go. I'm gonna add these into our blender. Now I'm gonna add in some lime juice some red wine vinegar, got a little honey too. Dijon mustard, some chipotle, I'm gonna add this right on in. Nice kick of flavor, we love that. And then finally, I've got some salt and pepper. Okay. Look at that beautiful color. You can tell when the dressing is done because it's nice and smooth. You see that chipotle has blended in and it's thickened up a bit. And this is gonna be absolutely perfect on our watermelon salad, y'all. I've got my watermelon here and I'm gonna start breaking this down. You wanna make sure you have a super sharp knife. And then also, under my cutting board, I've got a little surprise here. I've got some wet paper towel right up under it to make sure that this doesn't slip and slide. It's gonna make sure that this stays in place. To begin, I'm gonna cut off the ends of my watermelon. And then I also like to cut straight down the middle. This makes it easier when you're dealing with a much larger watermelon. You can break it down much quicker. 
Oh yeah, look at that. I like to get it to a stable position as quickly as possible because it's much easier to maneuver and then it's not gonna roll around a lot. We want to start to take off the sides. So we're gonna remove the rind and you can actually start to do this based on just looking at the top and seeing where it guides you. And as you remove that, just put it right into your discard ball. We're gonna get off as much of this as possible and then we're gonna go right back around once we're done and then just clean up and get off anything that we didn't before. And then once you have all of those edges and it's pretty bright and red, this is where we're gonna actually start to cut it into strips. We're making a salad, so I'm gonna go for bigger pieces. And I'm gonna take these ones in the center and then we're gonna break these down into cubes. I'm gonna cut again into wedges. And then I'm gonna cut right across again. And there you go. Now it's time to assemble our salad. I've got our cubed watermelon here and I'm just gonna add this into a big bowl. I'm gonna also add in some cucumber. I've got some heirloom tomatoes, which are quite special. The seeds are passed down from farmers every single season, so it's a special sort of hybrid there. Going to mix all of this together. And now I'm gonna add in some greens. I've got some mint, some arugula, and some basil. Sprinkle all of that in. Just kinda mix that in as well. And this is such a beautiful, colorful salad. All right. Now we're gonna add in that dressing we made earlier. Then I'm gonna do a big toss and get all of these ingredients to just really kind of soak in that dressing. What works so great about this salad is you're just going to get so many different flavor profiles. Like that sweetness from the watermelon is just going to complement that chipotle spice with that you get from the dressings. It's really sort of well balanced because of all of those flavors. Now I'm gonna transfer this to our pretty bowl. Perfect. And then I'm gonna just dress this up with our pickled onion. I'm just gonna place a few right on top. So gorgeous. And then add a little of our feta cheese. And this is gonna be a hit, y'all. This is ready to serve. If you've ever been to basically any party or barbecue, you know you gotta have a good punch and this one is great. So I've got some water here that's boiling and we're gonna use this to create a simple syrup for this recipe. And simple syrups are usually just water and sugar and then you can add in whatever you want so you can really sort of bring in some additional flavor and that's what we're gonna do here. So I'm adding in our sugar to our water and we're gonna get that to boiling temperature. And then I'm gonna add in some berries, some strawberries, some raspberries. And then finally, because rhubarb is in season right now, I'm going to add some rhubarb. I love to work it in drinks like this and it sort of brings down that sweetness of those berries and it's just so delicious. And finally, I'm gonna add in some mint. I'm just gonna stir all of this to combine and then I'm going to let this come to boiling so I can really let that sugar and all of this sort of dissolve and thicken up. Once it starts to boil, you can see that color developing, that bright red color that is just gonna make that punch just pop, okay, on that barbecue table. It's gonna be so beautiful. This has been going for about 20 minutes and it's perfectly thickened and that syrup is like delicious. And we wanted to make sure that all that sugar dissolved. So now that it's cooled down a bit, I'm gonna go ahead and strain it. This is our berry rhubarb syrup and we're ready to assemble our punch. I'm gonna take my syrup here and add this right into my pitcher. I've also got some ginger ale. And I've got a little vodka here too. Gotta have a little fun. This is mama's drink right here. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna add in some berries as well. This is gonna be just like a nice garnish. And then do a nice little stir here to combine everything. Oh yeah, 
That's perfect. Pour a little into this glass. You can see that gorgeous color. Those berries fly in. Look how beautiful this is. I cannot wait to serve this to our guests. And I'm actually gonna take some of the same punch and I'm gonna turn them into popsicles. Who doesn't love a popsicle during the summer? So I know they're gonna absolutely fall in love with this whole idea. I've showed you how to make most of our menu items and I've got a few more tricks up my sleeve. I'm gonna be serving a peach salad and also a family favorite potato salad. It's almost party time, guys. Next, when we come back, we are heading out to the grill. It's the day of the barbecue, y'all. I am so excited. It's a beautiful sunny day and I cannot wait for my guests to see the spread. My first two guests are Mercedes and Kelly. I work with both of these ladies and they are like sisters to me, so I had to invite them to my barbecue. My next two guests are Lola and Amy. Lola was my college roommate, and Amy, she's a newer friend I met through blogging. Chanel, we met each other working together ages ago, and Ariana, she's my sorority sister. <laughs> my last guest, well, you can't have a barbecue without inviting your mama, okay? So she definitely had to come. Mom, so good to see you. Anyone ready to eat? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's make our way to the table. <laughs> this is my watermelon salad that's in my cookbook, Everyday Grand. Enjoy. I love it. This is the main event. My simple ribs, even though they don't take a lot of effort, they taste amazing, y'all. You will love them. All right, ladies, cheers. 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 Yeah. Enjoy, dig in. So what do you guys think of the potato salad? Well, so this is really good. Really good. Mm. Delicious. Yeah. Look. Mama approves, that's it. If I say it's good, it's good. Let me tell you how long we worked on that recipe. Oh, there is a story with that, okay? We tested it <laughs> over and over and over. I think maybe at least 20 times. At least. Oh, and my mom and dad, they were like, nope, needs this. Nope, needs more of this. Before it went into the book, 
they were still nervous about it. I was right. like, it's we going into were. the book. Yeah. Right. But it's Regardless. been a hit. Everyone has loved it. Great. Right. Like, you did your thing, Joshua. Yeah. Okay, it's time for some games. Okay, this first one we're gonna play, it's called Celebrity in a Bag. You got all these little names in here, and these are different celebrities, and you can ask all of us yes or no questions so you can guess who the celebrity is that you have. Oh. 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 Is it a girl? Yes. yes. Okay. Is it an actor? Yes. yes. Does she have a Grammy? Yes. Yes. yes, and he got Emmy, Grammy, has, oh, Oscar, oh, and Tony. Oh, cool, I did not know that. <laughs> is what that meant. Is it Jennifer Hudson? Yeah! yeah. 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 Thank you. All right, guys, we've got popsicles. Woo. We've got a berry rhubarb, a peach sweet tea, yeah. and pink Woo. lemonade. Delicious. I cannot thank you enough for coming and enjoying my good food yeah. and enjoying the company. It ain't over yet because we are going to get on the dance floor. <laughs> okay. Let's bust the move. All right. Okay. Feeling inspired to throw your own summer barbecue? Scan the QR code for my recipes, featured products, and more. Just so you know, today may get a commission for purchases made through the QR code or links on our website.